let's uh, call the regular board meeting together of the Viacitas Water District. And uh, first uh, thing will be the Pledge of Allegiance. And Lisa, if you would lead us in that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Lisa. Roll call, please, Diane. Director Evans? Yes. Director Yes. Director Yes. Here. Here. Okay, going to look for a motion to adopt the agenda for the regular meeting of May 21st. Move. Second. Move in a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against? Okay, now we're going to have an introduction of Ann Johnson, our brand new administrative secretary. This is the tough part, Ann. After this, it gets easy. <laughs> Everything's easy after that. Did you give her the speech that she has to read, the three pages? It, it's short today, oh. but, you know, I, I prepped her ahead of time. <laughs> Bridget Anderson, I'm a human resources technician. And Ann Johnson, she joined the district last Monday, actually, so she's been with us just over a week. She's the new administrative secretary. She's filling a vacancy from late last year. Um, she most recently worked at Pachanga Tribal Government, and she was there for seven years. She is married to Dennis, and they have a quirky cat named Jack, who I have to mention twice during her orientation, she mixed them up. I want to say that. <laughs> and in her free time, she enjoys traveling, hiking, and reading. Wow. Okay. Great. Uh, and how, how old is Jack? Um, he'll be seven. Seven? And you've had him the entire time? No, we just adopted him last year. Was he a rescue or yeah. someone you knew? Or? He needed a home and I didn't think anybody else was going to take him. So <laughs> We're talking first, about the cat. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dennis sleeps outside now, and the cat sleeps inside. <laughs> <laughs> and you found out why no one else wanted him? Is he, is he a rowdy cat? Or? No, he's old. He's real quirky. He's, that's weird. <laughs> well, thank you. Welcome aboard. The pleasure here. Welcome, welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you. Oral communications, seeing no members of the public here. <coughs> we don't have to go through that. Uh, notice the public? No. Uh, consent calendar. Looking for a motion on 1.1 approval of minutes, which will include the warrant list and the financial reports. So moved. Second. Move and second. Roll call vote, please. Director Evans? Yes. Director Yes. Director Yes. 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 Uh, action items 2.1 acceptance phase one San Marcos interceptor. I have James Compel address the board. I'm surprised it was James. <laughs> Thank you, President Martin, members of the board. This is the acceptance for the uh, phase one of the San Marcos interceptor. As you may recall from the quarterly update that we had, uh, the interceptor project itself spans all the way from uh, the lift station, which, which is over by Discovery or over by the high school, San Marcos High School, all the way to Twin Oaks. And this phase, as you can see from uh, the uh, figure up, uh, figure up uh, on the board, is really from behind Twin Oaks over there uh, in the easement, uh, over through and underneath homes on Johnson Lane. Uh, through the orbits and camping world, Holland Motors parking lot, and then underneath the freeway, tie into the uh, section that was built in 2002, which is over by the Creekside Marketplace uh, behind Best Buy. Uh, this project uh, was completed on time, and actually happy to say under budget. We Whoa. had one change order. We had uh, several change order requests, <laughs> but we had uh, one change order which uh, showed a negative uh, change order credit of $250,000. Uh, the construction manager was done by a consultant that also came in right uh, basically just under budget and the only item that's actually remaining on this project which is not uh, have nothing to do with the contract is the environmental mitigation so unless there's any other questions uh, staff recommends acceptance of the project following the notice of completion and authorizing the release of funds after the uh, required 30 days uh, of course assuming there's no uh, no uh, claims Questions? Hey James, um, I know it's been going on for a while. How much? How much more is left? Uh, the next phase, which we'll call Phase Two, is in design currently. Uh, we have uh, some work to do uh, with easement and right-of-way acquisition, 
and it's scheduled over the next three, four years, and that's uh, roughly another 3,000 feet. And that'll take it all the way to uh, the, the lift station, lift station one. So it's around Via Veracruz or so? Yes, yeah, from west of Via Veracruz all the way to lift station one. That'll and be one that'll project? Be you think that'll be one project? Right now we have it scheduled as one project, so. Thank you. Any other? <coughs> Is the line that's being put in the one that developers will be ultimately connecting into, or will that be a separate line? Individual uh, developments themselves will have to collect, uh, have to connect into a normal uh, collection main. Mm -hmm. This is an interceptor, so there's no lateral. So uh, it will be connecting those to a mantle, eight inch lines or 10 inch lines connecting to a mantle into this system. Into this, this pipe? Yes, they'll ultimately get to this pipe, but no direct laterals to individual lots or individual oh, properties. So there will be manholes that will connect into this line, and then smaller pipe will get to the manhole yeah. into the pipe. Yeah, laterals will connect yeah. to there. Okay. Sure. I just want to make a motion that we uh, accept the San Marcos Interceptor Phase One project. Okay. Second. And I have a couple of questions I want to ask. Oh. That's okay. Um, so we're calling this phase one, but wasn't the area between 78 and Via Veracruz just done? Yes, that, that was actually called phase 1A. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what happened was uh, phase one originally included this whole section, plus the area from Grand uh, all the way to Via Veracruz. Uh, working with the city at the time, they had a development that was uh, fast track. It was on the corner of Grand and what was going to be future Creekside called uh, Creekside Shops or Shop A's. Um, and marketplace, and that was being uh, rapidly moving forward. So they, uh, the city worked with us, requested the district to accelerate that project. So we separated that project out and accelerated that portion. Unfortunately, uh, with the RDA funds and everything that happened, that project got delayed. So, but our project was already in construction by then. So this phase one, what size is this pipe? Uh, this pipe here is primarily 36 inch pipe uh, the whole way. Uh, when you get onto the other side of the freeway, it goes to 39 and then ultimately goes to 42 inch. 42 inch part of phase 1A or part of the next phase? Phase 1A was 42 inch and it'll be 42 inch all the way down uh, basically to the Lake San Marcos, uh, for the, sorry, to the lift station over by uh, the high school. So what size pipe is this replacing? A 21 inch pipe. So quite substantially larger. Yes. And this is paid for from uh, used to call it PFF funds. Uh, 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 how is this paid for? It's a split between capacity and uh, replacement. So there's a 21 inch pipe already that's existing. So that comes out of the replacement funds and Tom will correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. And then the difference in capacity of what a 36 could hold uh, between what a 21, that comes out of capacity funds for sewer. So this is, this is where we do the negative funding where we pay for it now, borrow, put it in, and then we pay ourselves back as development connects. But as development has come into that area, knowing we were going to do this, we already charge them the capacity fees, and we have those. If it's already pay. developed, that's correct. But it's already happened. Yeah. So the idea is that Tom works the numbers out just perfectly, so it all comes together in the end. At zero. <laughs> <laughs> when I retire. When you retire. Okay. And uh, uh, one other question is, I, I heard you told me that a couple of homes that it goes through here, uh, how deep in the ground into the homes was that pipe laid? Uh, roughly 15 feet below the bottom of the house, but uh, basically the, the footings. Uh, so we're about 15 feet from top of pipe to uh, bottom of the house. And, and having no pump stations anywhere along there, uh, everything's got to be draining down. So how deep in the ground is it when it goes through uh, the creek district? Uh, well, the creek district, as you may recall, is actually being raised. So currently the pipe sits anywhere, uh, depending on the alignment, uh, between 9 and 12 feet deep. Uh, the future pipe, once the final grading of the Creek District with the levee systems and the pads are built, will be over 20 feet deep. Wow. Okay, so it's only the deep now because of the surface is here. The surface is going to be up here. Correct. So you're maybe a deeper, it's the same pipe. You're not digging any deeper, you're just adding. The dirt's going on top. on top of it. Great, thank you. And then how deep is it where it actually connects into pump station one? Um, actually, I haven't looked at that in a while. I know it's uh, it's not more than eight or nine feet deep. I don't recall. It's less than 10 feet deep where it actually ties in. And that's because the height of the <coughs> pump station is 
that much lower. Yeah, the, the pipe always goes downhill, but the train on top of it can go up, down. It right. doesn't really matter. Our, as long as our pipe's going downhill, okay. what's on top doesn't matter. Great. Yeah. Thank you, James. Mr. Sinella. Yep. Is the uh, the tunneling under 78, is, it, is that portion already completed? Yes, it is. It's a 54-inch casing with the, the right, normal 36-inch pipe. So, yeah, that was completed as one of the early phases of the project. Okay. Well, roughly when? I'm sorry? Roughly when? Uh, let's see, uh, almost six months ago, almost five months ago, five months ago is so, when it started. So it was completely, there was no impact to the freeway traffic. I, I drive that every day and I don't remember even seeing that truck. Uh, no, there wasn't. It, it was actually a tunnel underneath. So we we're quite a bit low and uh, basically we had the seismic monitors. We had to do surveying uh, required by Caltrans. Mm -hmm. Uh, several times during the project and then several times after every <coughs> week after the project for uh, two or three months we had to survey to make sure there's no settlement. Wow. Yeah, it's actually a full-on tunnel, tunnel yeah. boring machine that goes underneath it and does the project. Impressive, thanks. Did you win that pipe? Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> so, there was, hey, you would you try to climb or something. So. Thank you. Thank okay, you. there's a motion and a second. Seeing no more questions. Roll call vote please. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, item 2.2, uh, Ward Construction Agreement for Sewer Replacement, San Marino and Hermosita. Thank you, uh, President Martin, members of the board, as one project finishes, another <coughs> one begins. Uh, this is a, a small project, a small in-house design project, an eight-inch sewer line over off of San Marino. Uh, it needs replacement uh, during our normal routine maintenance. We, we uh, record areas that may have had either separations or what we call bellies where the pipe goes up, I'm sorry, down and back up, creating a basically a, a place where water or sewer will pool and basically restricting the actual effectiveness of the pipe and needs replacement. So this is uh, one of those cases. So uh, staff in-house designed this for replacement. We uh, sent it out to bids. Obviously we received three bids. Charles Kim Company uh, was the low bidder at $64,956. Uh, staff and council reviewed all the documentation. It was all in order as the uh, lowest, most responsive and uh, responsible bidder. And unless there's any questions, uh, staff recommends award of construction contract to Charles Kim Company for the amount $64,956 for the replacement project. Okay, any questions? Uh, how, how old is this particular pipe? Uh, it's in that older section. I believe most of those, uh, I don't recall, is in the mid to late 50s. Nope. So 56, 58 is what mm -hmm. I see on most of those pipes. Any other questions? Yeah. Go ahead, Betty. Just, just curious. So you, when you receive three bids and one's 65,000 and the other is 104, mm -hmm. that's a pretty significant difference. What was, was, what was the difference between the, the proposals? Uh, that, that is an excellent question. Actually, the biggest difference in this case was, uh, and you, the board may recall, Charles King uh, <clears throat> is a local contractor, and they actually just aw were awarded by the board a uh, job for Linda Vista. So they're out here. They're already mobilized. They're getting ready to start. Uh, there's really no startup, no new yard for them. There's a lot of duplication and cost that they don't have to uh, incur because they're already out here working. So uh, I actually talked to uh, Charles King uh, after the, we reviewed the bids and asked them about the pricing, and they were very comfortable with their pricing. Okay, thanks. And I have to tell you, the last one on the list, uh, I don't have in front of me, CAS Construction. Mm -hmm. This is a, a mini, mini, mini job for them. They're huge, they're the ones that did all the grading of San Diego. Yeah. Uh, they're a huge company. And that's usually what happens when you have a bigger firm, they've got so much overhead, just to be competitive on a small project, their overhead kills them. They're a good firm, they're a good company. A question. Yes, please. <coughs> The first one is, since Charles King Company is piggybacking off of Mike's is here, do we have another project that we'll be able to take advantage of them? <laughs> <laughs> Moving around on our schedule anywhere? Well, that's we'll, a huge savings. Yeah, we'll have to competitively bid it no matter what. I understand uh, but that. however, uh, we are looking forward to mm -hmm. uh, moving other projects out. But uh, by the time they're done, we'll maybe Linda Vista if we're lucky. But however, uh, the schedule, we'll see how the schedules fall. Just so you have it in mind. But my, my first question really was, I noticed this was in some of the projects in the budget too, the sagging, is the sagging just settling of the earth that makes the pipe sag after all this time? What makes it sag? There's a few different things that can happen. It can be in general, set, uh, general settling. A majority of the time it's improper compaction. 
in an area and, and then after a while uh, with just uh, you know water and normal settlement mm -hmm. that area actually settles the pipe settles down sometimes it's the contractor itself uh, did something wrong and the actual grade wasn't done correctly however a pipe that's been in since the 50s it probably be either if the sag is I'm sure it's been there for a while, but it's probably settlement of the earth over time. Okay, yeah. and how do you, is this where you send a little camera through to find the sags? Or? Yes, that's what the camera crews do. They go through in areas and they find these things for uh, different maintenance areas, basically. Thank you. Thank you very much. Th this was a clay pipe, I assume? Yes. And how did the rest of the pipe look? Uh, I saw the video portion here. The pipe itself looked like it was in fairly decent shape. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Just to follow up what Patty was talking about, I think uh, Charles Keating, they did 1A, didn't they? That's correct, they did 1A. And they did a very good job there. Yeah, we were very happy with their work. They, so they've been around. Good. Well, we actually did what Director Evans talking about. We executed a change order with them and add an additional thousand feet or something to the contract. They were already there. They gave us a cost that was so good we could not do it. So we actually did take advantage of the fact they were there and gave them quite a change order to keep going. So, see if it works again. Yeah. It good job. So. James, so the sink that's there now, mm -hmm. did it manifest itself or did we find it doing something or did sewer back up was there a trigger something happened to made us look at it because i'm sure we're not doing that with every pipe in the city all the time mm -hmm. i don't know if uh, this one uh, when the sink was discovered but i know that the district uh, operations crews for the sewer system they have areas that are designated as uh, uh, enhanced maintenance areas and uh, this is one of those enhanced maintenance areas and over time uh, we're basically through whether it's a small job or larger which they need engineering support the the budget comes out for and I think the board may see it as sewer I and I budget um, has come out to actually uh, alleviate and evaluate these different areas so we're just kind of knocking them down one by one and this one I'm sure if you ask the uh, operations crews they probably wanted this one done years ago but we're getting around to it now so but uh, director Martin we do actually camera I can't remember if it's every two years or every three years but 15 or 18 inches smaller we do camera every mile of pipe every two to three years yeah, so it's an ongoing, it's sort of like painting the Golden Gate Bridge. They get to the other end, they start again. So the sewer crews do the same thing. And, and it's a fairly expensive uh, uh, um, fix. I mean, it needs to be done, but $60,000, you probably didn't collect that much from those, well, it's all the houses affected up the water. It's everybody that drains into yeah. it. So we probably did collect the revenue from it. But yeah. if it was a real small piece on a dead end street and there's four houses, you're absolutely right. So did this list, do you have a, do they have a list or do you have a list showing how many of these are out there that potentially need to be replaced yes. coming up relatively soon? Yeah, if you look to, if you, if you call on the budget, there's an I and I replacement that James was referring to, and I okay. think it's $350,000 this year. We carry that every year, and it could be everything from a dip. Other things we find are sewer laterals that were put in years ago. You actually, if the pipe's already in place, the way they connect a sewer lateral to it, it's real technical. They drill a whole bunch of holes, hit it with a hammer, now there's a hole inside the pipe. They put a saddle on it and they stuff the lateral into it. That works really well except for sometimes when the guy would stuff the lateral into the fitting, he would shove it all the way into the pipe. So we find things like that where we have to dig up and pull the pipe back out. So there's all kinds of little funny things we find, but um, I don't see Braden here today, but they do have a list and they base it on priority. So if they have something that if we have a dip, you have another one coming on no road. no road going into San Marcos Boulevard. That's going to be a lot of fun for the, uh, oh, yeah. for the community. And if it's coming downhill and it's actually a dip, you'll get sewer and the, we create fat balls. So you'll have like snow, how snowball makes. So you have the flow stop and it turns and turns and turns. And so the grease ball on top gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, eventually it gets bigger than the pipe. So if he has something like that, that's a priority. But if it's something like this, it's just somewhere in the priority of what causes trouble. So anything that's going to cause a backup or a spill, that goes to the top of the list. Thank you. Yeah, just, when we were talking about the budget the other day, we talked about how the sewer lines mostly last around 50 years. Mm -hmm. So if this 
pipe was put in in the 50s, it's like 64 years old, mm -hmm. but yet you went through it and you said it was reasonably okay. So we're fixing the dip, or sag, or whatever you call it, but the pipe itself is still good for it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. majority of the pipe was okay, but there's always sections. Now, unfortunately, uh, going in and retrofitting and fixing little sections uh, are, are quite higher than just installing a new pipe. But, mm -hmm. but so you end up paying a premium uh, per foot. However, that uh, you know, when we do our review of our systems, we look at each section and we look at what needs to be replaced. A lot of those costs are manholes. They get eaten up quite aggressively because of the acid that forms in them. Pump stations, pumps, pipes, all of that type of stuff is a very short lifespan. A water pump might last 10, 15 years. A sewer pump will usually last three to five. I see. So that's where we but wear those things down. Clay pipe, unless it breaks, it's inert. It, it just, you can't hurt it. So unless it's just an earthquake or settles, it just, it's gonna sit there for the next 100 years. Yeah. No other questions, we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. We haven't had a motion and a second? No. So we have a motion second. and we have a second. Thank you. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. Uh, 2.3, public outreach, uh, agency branding. Yes, what you have before you is the board's been <coughs> talking for over the last few months, and it came up at the workshop back in um, March, about the district outreach, who we are, what we want to project ourselves to be, whether it's called branding or messaging, uh, whatever the case may be, whether it be PowerPoints, whether it be handouts. And there's been a quite a bit of discussion at the board level of what it is exactly we're trying to accomplish and what we want to do as a board. Excuse me, what you want to do as a board and what message you as a board want to get out there. Um, it is something that is definitely beyond the capability of staff from the standpoint of what it is the board wants to do. From staff level, we're, I don't want to say we're confused, but we're unclear as to what the intent of the board is and how you want to get the message out. I think we all saw it last week in play, very strongly. And I'll go over that later in the, uh, in the general manager contents, but you saw, the, you saw the outcome of the fact that the district did exactly what it was supposed to do, never missed a beat, never, nothing. It was, it was done, I want to say, fairly flawlessly. But what message of what we just did does the public understand and what it took to get there? So I think you got a real good taste of that last week, even after Lisa spoke to the fire marshal and some other people and said, hey, can you at least give us a shout out at the press uh, thing for the fire department? Well, we did, but it didn't make the cut. Um, and then you saw the news article, I think, that Logan did and our name got in there, but that was about the extent of it. So it's a uh, unthankful industry and that is just, I hate to say it, that is what it is. But it's a good example of maybe the message you guys would like to get out there and how we get it out. This kind of rolls into the issue of the budget where we're going to change that to add an um, additional public information officer for uh, making sure what day, you know, all that kind of stuff we spoke about at the board meeting. So what you have before you today is Lisa did some research of talking to some, several branding specialists, some very um, well-respected ones, talked to a lot of other agencies. <clears throat> I don't know that branding is the proper term that we're trying to look at here. I think messaging is really what we're after. I believe there's probably five different views on what the board has on what they want that messaging. It's probably relatively consistent, but being said in probably five different ways is kind of what I'm getting to. So really what it comes down to is we've kind of shown here what branding is, and you go to the bottom of page 42, it's messaging. <coughs> it could be the logo, it could be the website, it could be um, the messaging. I agree with Dr. Uh, Dr. Director Sinella as far as consistency on things that go out as far as appearance. That's professionalism. We need to be professional. Um, PowerPoints, training, workshops, you name it. It's all listed right there. And kind of the uh, option that we see that we would put in there in the recommendation if the board wants to move forward is, is really it's beyond our scope and our knowledge and our expertise. We run a water district. We don't do messaging. Um, and obviously, since nobody knows who we are and what we do, and they kind of forget about us, we're obviously not very good at messaging. We're pretty good at running the district, but we're not <laughs> too good about getting the other part of it. So what, <clears throat> what I've kind of just thrown together for the memo for the board's discussion, and it's really what we're looking for, is if this is the intent, we really do need to bring an uh, expert in 
that knows what they're doing. They can pull out of you what you may all individually want. They can tell us how to get there. And it may be once we know for sure exactly what it is you want, we may be able to do it. I'm gonna recommend we don't. I'm gonna recommend we continue down that path. We allow the expert to develop it, show us, we implement it and then we maintain it and we move forward with it. So with that, uh, this is just here for the board's discussion um, and direction for staff so we know what, uh, which way you'd like us to jump. Uh, just to add to that, I, this uh, on Tuesday I, I made a presentation to uh, the joint breakfast group of the chamber and the, what's the name of it? How better? BBN, the BBN. Business Builders Network. Builders, Business Builders Network. Uh, <coughs> 30, 40 people uh, had that slideshow that I produced and, and uh, very, got a great response, but my question to them was, with all the fine work, and I kept saying, and kudos to the folks that were out there, the fine work by the fire department, yeah. the military, and all that. Uh, did anybody hear anything about the water district? <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> were, were you out there? Yeah. I said, well, no, we had the EOC open, but you know, the water that got there was what put out the fires. So, in, in my view, uh, which I think we're going to need a, a little more discussion as to what, how do we, what do we want, and how do we get what we want from here to there. Um, all of your points are right on the money. And, and what I see is that we have initial expenditure to see if we can solidify that and then give direction so that we can get some somebody to come in and propose on Get it done, develop it, and then we have it, and then we maintain it and move forward. Well, but I, what I see is, I don't think, enough to get it actually done. I see enough to get it started. Is you what are I correct. Yeah, and okay. Then okay. if you go to the bottom paragraph right above the recommendation, yeah, right. that's where I say, okay, this is going to be the initial. This is going to be ten to fifteen or twenty thousand, whatever, to do this and see what the board wants. Then it's going to be probably fifty to a hundred thousand dollars to actually do it, develop it, and have it. Yeah. Once we have it and we own it, okay. then we maintain it and move forward. All right. And I guess my question would be, once we have it, what's it? <laughs> That's the question. That's the question you guys need to tell me what it is. You know, I, I don't, I, and I know that Jim started this last year, uh, and when he first got on board as the president, he started bringing up what we need to do. And we weren't really sure what it is. Uh, I, I, in my mind, it's always been that uh, the agency's done a great job, and that's why nobody knows of you, because you do do a great job. If everyone was cursing you, we'd all know your name. You're absolutely very quickly. You're absolutely correct. So um, everybody does, uh, doesn't know who you are because you do a good job at it. So I mean, that, that's, that's the reward you get is anonymity. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's a reward. It's better than having 100 people here today. Um, you know, with screaming problems. at you. Exactly. So you do a good job at it. But I just see that in, in, as the future comes upon us very quickly, uh, indirect portable, direct potable, are reality things that are moving our way that we need to be prepared for, and we need to get the public prepared for it, unlike the Water District has never had to do before. Correct. Um, the first time this thing was unrolled 10, 15 years ago in San Diego, it was a huge flop. Yep. Because there was no, no preparation done ahead of time, and who do I talk to, who do I know, who do I, so I just see the board taking on a larger responsibility of being trying to be the face for uh, the water district as a face someone they know. You know, oh, oh I know Mike Sinelli, he's on a board, he's not gonna let us drink raw sewage. You know, I mean, those kind of things, because before they don't know who's on the board. They don't have a clue, they don't care. They have better things to worry about. So it was to bring us out of anonymity into a, a position that, oh yeah, they're doing good things over there. Just continue to let them know what we're doing, and, Today, unfortunately, as much as I hate Facebook, Twitter, and all those things, uh, that's the way you gotta go. Okay, that's what the people are gonna listen to. So it was someone to help bring the board there into the future. And, and seeing as indirect potable is probably not that far away, um, the sooner the better. But we've been out a year and a half and we've got to the, to the point now of saying, well, 20, 30,000 to get us started. And that's a year and a half. So if we continue along that track, Indirect portable will be here before we get anything done. <laughs> so I, I guess what I'm saying is, I don't think we need to spend a, a branding. You have a good brand. I had uh, a husband of a constituent say to me the other day, 
Before you got elected, I didn't even know there was a Vallecitos water district. <laughs> now, every time I turn around, I see one of your trucks because they're aware. And, and that, that's all it is to be, be aware. And I think that's the messaging issue versus the branding issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think the brand you have is great. Yeah. I think the reputation is very good in the industry. It's going to be very good once people know about it, but they just don't know about yeah. it. So it's to, to make yourself more relevant, I guess. Yeah. To make the, the water district more relevant in the community, I guess that, that's my and I And I think that's where if we bring the people in that know how to do that communication and that outreach, we can do it. I'm not, I'm not even remotely concerned that we don't have the staff or even with the expansion of staff that we're talking about in the budget. I have no fears whatsoever that we can't do it once we have it right. and we know what it is. And I think that's really it is. And I think you're absolutely correct, Martin. You, you've got all these things coming forward. How do we get the story out? How do we continue? And the old way they approached it before, now it's pure whatever it's called. And the Water Authority is actually adopting a resolution Thursday supporting it. Uh, so it's it, it has gotten out there and they did a coalition to further it but they got the messaging out and that's what they did is they brought the experts in to get the message out Mr. there any um and uh, I, I guess we would be smart to piggyback on those professionals that have been uh, oh, yeah. solicited is that, that how we're going to there's find there's a very small group that we're going to okay. look to lisa actually has already spoken with all of them and, and then, that's what our then intent I, is then i guess my next assumption trying to make conf confirmation of it is it once we have identified someone who we agree is the, the person that's going to give us the initial look, then we're going to get into, as we talked about, a workshop to yep. discuss just exactly yeah. what it is that we're not looking for and how we're going to get there? What we're recommending is they would meet with you individually to make sure they understand individually what your direction is. Mm -hmm. Then we will have a workshop that literally is the board with the consultant saying this is what we want, then the consultant knows, and then we have direction. But it'll be a distinct, separate workshop for the board to discuss that that approach. And, and uh, my question to you would be, when is that going to happen? Let's set, let's set a date and a time. I think it otherwise can, it'll be a year and a half. And it can move forward pretty quickly. It can pretty move forward quickly. very quick. Within a month, we could actually have a consultant. Okay. Are we ready for a motion? Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions, Mr. Yeah. Sonella? Does anybody happen to have a copy of the budget that we looked at on Monday? I didn't bring mine. Um, should, be under, should be under. Yeah, I looked at my uh, iPad. Take a minute. There, on, on page two, the very first sentence, and Betty and I were talking about this after the budget meeting. It, it, it references and, and captures everything we've been talking about as far as the importance of educating our customers and the community and promoting awareness with water recycling and everything else. So it's it's so important that it's line item one. Just page one is a picture of us. So page two is the first sentence is there. It's this about, is all about awareness. Yeah. So I think we all agree. I, I might mention a very nicely photoshopped picture of us <laughs> where we all look much thinner. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I think I, I, I definitely agree with everything that uh, President Martin said as far as uh, the quality of work that um, our district is doing. And, and then in, in a large part is why we don't get room full of folks and, and people banging at the door. Um, one concern I do have, though, um, is if we spend ten to fifteen thousand dollars to to meet with a, a consultant group. I, I kind of visualized last on Monday we talked in the, the the budget meeting. I visualized hiring somebody, you know, with that forty-hour position that we talked about, mm -hmm. who would come to us with a marketing background, with social media, branding, <coughs> public relations, kind of a little bit of an experienced person that if we brought them on board. We wouldn't have to spend ten or fifteen thousand dollars. We could have a workshop with that person. You know, I, I, I thought about that, and I, and I kind of got that pressure from you. But if if you actually back up and you look at the concept, it, we're not looking for a staff person that is a full time branding person. What we do as an agency doesn't change. It, it, it's a very slow trudging change for us. IPR is a good example. We know it's coming, but we're ten years out. Uh, I believe we'd be better served to use, an, it's sort of like uh, James when he does um, engineering projects. We have on-staff engineers, but we hire the outside consultant to do the design, bring it forward, and then we use our existing resources to maintain it. To bring on a branding person that's an expert that has that kind of background experience, we're going to be spending $150,000 a year to bring them on to the staff level. If you reach out and you get that support and you bring it in, you develop the brand and then we maintain it. Then we're talking about a PIO type person who can keep updates, take that, and move forward. Now, if we want to continue with the branding resource, we can always contract and keep that expertise available to us. 
that would be, I think, better served from the standpoint. Otherwise, what we're going to have is a lone employee that's a very high salary person with probably a limited outreach that they would do on an ongoing basis. Uh, I think we'd be better off to do the approach of get the expertise, develop what the board wants, and then maintain it. If we need to change that brand, we need to reach out, we bring them in and modify it. I, I think we would be over hiring the quality of what we need. We're not a Fortune 500 company. Um, I, I think we would be reaching well beyond what we need as an agency. Yeah. Now, I understand that and mo most of the folks that I've met that, that uh, design websites or maintain websites, they have some sort of marketing, either a marketing degree, or maybe they've never done it for you know, as part of their living, but well, it's directly. I think that'll be part of what we're looking for. they have some sort of experience with yeah, that. I agree. So. We'll be looking for that. And definitely certainly can add some value. Yeah, we'll be looking for that in the job description that they do have that. Uh, Lisa's a com background is actually communication, marketing, and chemistry. Uh, and I don't know how her left side argues with the right side. Yeah. She probably didn't get anywhere. But what we will definitely be looking for that in the skills set of what we're looking for in that position. But not a full branded person that that would be their sole thing. It would be the ability to keep it moving and build on it. That's what we'd be looking for. And, and, and I would think that a consultant is a, it's a good start if we can do it quickly. Yes. Because the consultant would probably know if we hire the right one what it is we really need by the time he gets done talking to the five of us. That's versus an employee who never talks to either any one of us, much less five of us, they work directly for you. A consultant is going to have interface with all They're of going us. to basically work in, through me, but they're going to be working for the board. Right. And if we hire a really good consultant, he'll know what we need by the time he gets done talking Absolutely. to us. And by the time we have that workshop yeah. saying you need this, you need that, and yeah. maybe he can recreate what we're doing over in that department because he knows what it is we're looking for. I agree. So yeah, I, I kind of think it's a good start. but. Times of the Times essence. Times of the essence. I, I get the message. I, and this is no offense to anybody, but I know some people get their pet projects and everything else gets put on the back burner. And this is kind of a, from what I can tell, front a board front burner project <laughs> sure. that we want to get done. Message. We don't want it going on the back burner. Message received. Thank you. Yeah, with, with that? Nope. So go ahead. Ms. Evans? I was going to say, is this an appropriate time to make the motion? Sure. Okay. I just need consensus and direction okay. from the board. Uh, well, I don't, do I make the motion and then make my comments, or do I make my comments and then make the motion? Whichever you'd like to do. Okay. Well, I'll make my comments first, and mostly I think in a way we're all talking and we're putting the horse, uh, the cart in front of the horse in a way with some of our questions. They're all valid, but I think if I read this and what I'm hoping this means is that we are going to hire someone who may or may not do the work, but what they're going to do is confer with all of us and help the five of us come to agreement on what it exactly is we're trying to do with the messaging. Because to me, I see the messaging as I want us to broaden people's thinking about water, water usage, water management, how they can be involved in the process, and how Valacid is, is supplying the water for them. I don't see it as branding Valacidas are, are blowing the horn for us. I want it to be broader than that. So I may be on one side, whereas someone else may be in another. So I'm, I, I would like this to me, before I make the motion, that this 10 to 15 would go for someone who would bring us together in workshop so we can come to agreement on what we're looking for. Absolutely. And then once we know what we're looking for, we then get together and decide the next step of who would be hired to proceed forward. Yes. which may or may not be that same individual or Cor company. Correct. The one who does you through the work, takes you through the workshop, they may be a firm that we decide you like, and then they help develop it. Mm -hmm. Or it could be, yeah, we got the ideas, now let's repropose it and bring firms in to get, make sure we get a good price. Yeah. Odds are, to be perfectly honest, if you like the individual or the company you work with, you're probably just going to move forward into the next phase with them. But that is the intent, is to sit you down, extricate staff, be honest, get us out of this process, let the board say this is where we want to go. And then that consultant will say this is how you get there. Once you do that, we'll develop it, and then staff takes it and runs with it. That, oh. I have a question before you make your motion, just because of what was just said. And, and I, I, then I want us to be very careful that we don't get the, uh, the classic consultant at the front end who's doing a good job but it, when it comes time for pose because he believes that he's 
the, the shoe in on the e kid and so whatever kind of proposal we put agree. together yeah. we should extend it to the second phase so we yeah. get an idea at least where it's going to go yeah we're, we're, we're very well aware of that perfect yeah. perfect okay then um, I move to authorize an initial expenditure of approximately ten to fifteen thousand dollars to select a firm and complete initial steps in the um, messaging process you a second second Okay. Yes, Mr. Porter? Just, uh, I would like to uh, say I kind of agree with you, Betty, on your approach on that and where you're going with it. Me, I prefer anonymity to uh, moratoriums. <laughs> so, uh <-huh. laughs> so I think uh, we've done a good job uh, up to now, and I think uh, uh, this is the right direction. I'd like to go at it slow and, uh, and bring the board together as a united front and, uh -huh. and objectives and then see where we go from there. Discussion. Discussion. Yes. Uh, it wasn't part of the motion, but uh, I've heard us say more than once we're going to get this done in the next 30 days. Oh, we'll move forward immediately. Thank you. Can we be back to us next month? Yes, that's. I think, like I said, Lisa's already reached out to several firms. They know we're hopefully coming back quickly. So it's, it's possible that it could come back to the June. We have a meeting on the 18th. Mm, I would say we will probably have a firm to come back in the second meeting in June for you to approve. Perfect. I, that's a, I, if we can go that fast, the worst case would be the first meeting in July. Okay. That's well, and and we, we're having a, a, a workshop on the 10th of June, uh, which is for the uh, budget. Yeah. Uh, we could, if you had something, then we could add it to that meeting. Slim to none chance. Okay. I'd say the second meeting in June is the probably 18th. the soonest. Okay. No, yeah. that, that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, worst case, again, like I before. said, first meeting in July. That's worst case. Okay. Great. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. We'll call a vote, please. Director Evans? Yes. Director Evans? Yes. Director Yes. 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 Okay. Item 2.4 Awkward JPIA Commitment to Excellence Certificate. Yes, I'll have uh, Jerome Janis uh, come forward and speak to the board about this. I think you guys may have seen Jerome in the past. Jerome is our risk manager, supervisor, so he's in charge of risk management, safety, training. Uh, He's the gentleman who sat there, uh, started us at 11 o'clock last Wednesday. He's our um, EOC coordinator. EOC coordinator. Uh -huh. So all the stuff that was all the programs, all the stuff put in place is all done through Jerome and his staff. Jerome, I missed your last name. Janice, J-A-N-U-S. Okay. I'll introduce myself. Again. And if you never noticed the flag to your right, that was flown over Ford Operating Base in Iraq where Jerome was uh, actually stationed, or it's not Iraq, <laughs> Afghanistan, right. Afghanistan, yeah, right. yes. when he was uh, serving over there. Yeah. Wonderful, that was in 19... Uh, 2007 to, through 2008. 2007 to 2008. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, uh, President Martin, uh, members of the board. Uh, so, uh, Dennis said, my name's Jerome Janis, I'm the risk management supervisor here. For you is item 2.4, and it's a request to allow the district to participate in OPWIP JPIA's commitment to excellent program. Uh, the program is established by OPWIP JPIA to assist its member agencies in um, uh, reducing frequency and severity of uh, liability, uh, workers' compensation, and property losses. Uh, if the district commits to it, we really don't have to change any of our procedures. We're, we're at this point doing really well in, in our risk reduction. Uh, it just basically shows to our insurance provider that we're committed if we have or we come across something that we have several incidents of some type of a loss that we're willing to work with them to reduce that loss. So, so if there is any questions, um, uh, request offers. Go ahead. I, I, I'm yes, sir. I was just at the uh, Aqua GPIA meeting up in Monterey. And uh, I, I, the one day, the first day was on the JPA. Uh, awesome, uh, very uh, exciting group, and exciting to watch what they're doing. With it, and it's awesome. Um, I did notice that they were axing one of their members who had uh, many, many claims. Okay. And a really bad board, from what I can tell, uh, <laughs> which is the problem. Uh, uh, but I think you do a great job. And I know some people got checks back, uh -huh. and that's because they paid too much. Right. Uh, thank you. I, I thank Tom, but I know it's really you. Thank you for keeping us right, even if we don't overpay. Oh, you're <laughs> you need a check back, you get a refund because you paid too much. Same with taxes. 
So good it's job, really a great group. Uh, a lot of good education there for board members about the JPIA. Uh -huh. um, and then when you realize that Aqua really exists because of the JPIA, that makes a lot of sense uh, as well. Yeah. So uh, good job. Thank you. If the board does take motion to approve this, I would like you to stop and see Diane before you leave because we signed the document before you leave so we don't have to hurry you down afterwards. Well, we did have little banners on our JPIA as, as uh, uh, commitment excellence. Oh, great. That was on our banners this year already, so they must have believed in you when you well, said you're Yeah, uh, Peter Kajenski, our, our representative there, is really pushing for us to be participants in there, and he helps us uh, yeah. quite a bit. So. Great group. Great group. Yeah. Very exciting. Thank you. I uh, need a motion. Move to, to approve. Second. Second. Roll call. Director Evans? Yes. Director Yes. 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 Okay, 2.5, CASA bylaws. Yes, what you have before you is, <coughs> I'd say every couple of years, uh, same as we do, where we go through our policies and uh, regulations. This begins on, a, excuse me, page. Uh, <coughs> Page 47. Um, they go through and they check um, different things that, one, it just can be updated because of legal issues. It could be some process that they have that's just no longer applicable. It could be terms. It could be changing things. So you've got, you've got the bylaws recommend. It's already been approved by the bylaws committee of cost of the executive board. And it basically changes uh, some issues on membership, uh, length of terms on the board of directors, um, manners of elections, and then the types of committees that are authorized. Uh, as I indicated, this actually is already approved by the internal cost of committee. Uh, they're asking all the individual members. Uh, board direction, what we're requesting is confirmation of the um, changes. Unless there's any questions, looking for a motion? So moved. Second? Second. And a second. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Okay, uh, 2.6 CSDA bylaws. Uh, same story, different organization. Unless there's any questions. <laughs> Shortest staff report I've ever given. There's a motion. Second. And a second. Roll call, please. Director Evans? Yes. Director Hernandez? Yes. Director Yes. Director Yes. Yes. Director Martin? Yes. Yes. Okay, 2.7 North San Diego Water Reuse Coalition. NSDWRC, and that's got, as short as you can get. We got to that short. It used to be a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. We even have a logo now. Uh, this was requested uh, by Director uh, Hernandez to be placed on the board. I give you a little background there as to just what it is. Uh, it is an informal group that started several years back. Um, it actually started with uh, Lucadia, uh, Leaving Hand, and I believe ourselves, just because we were all pursuing similar projects. It initially started with every agency from Poway going due west to the coast, north all the way up, including Fallbrook uh, at one point. Uh, some of those agencies did drop out over the years. I think there's eight or nine of us at this point, plus Camp Pendleton who joined in two years ago. The whole purpose of the group right now, it's an informal group of basically um, senior staff and general managers. Uh, we meet once a month just to talk about where we're going. Director Hernandez has represented us twice uh, with the, uh, I keep wanting to call it marketing, um, Lobby, thank you. Lobbying back in D.C. Um, he has gone uh, twice or three times? Twice? Twice. Twice. I will be bringing that back before you at the next board meeting for the upcoming trip to Washington. So he's represented us um, in Washington going after WERDA, Water Resource Development Fund. And we've been looking for about $50 million in funds. Uh, so they meet with representatives. We've received to date uh, through Prop 84, I believe, about $1.8 million towards various projects. We've probably expended twenty-five to $30,000 contributing towards the program, building things. You may recall that the board um, moved forward with awarding the number one list station pump, where we pre-authorized that. So the funding for that project is actually all coming from the grants we've gotten from Prop 84. So we're, we're well ahead of the curve of what we put in versus out. So again, at this point, it's an informal group. We have a preliminary design report that's done showing all of the North County projects be tied together. We are currently in the process of completing a pro program level EIR for all of those projects. Um, and then once that's done, the whole intent is if an agency is going to do something, look at the design, 
do it concurrently with another agency. Don't build a piece of pipe over here that can only be used by one agency. Build a bigger pipe and build it over here so we can all share it. That's the whole purpose here is just a 30 year look as a resource of recycled water. Uh, but again, that, that's just the background. And again, this was put on the, at the request of Director Hernandez. Okay. Questions? No, uh, just that uh, I would like to uh, be a part of the representative. I, I did, the wording seems a little bit representing. Uh, Dennis has been with this organization from its beginning. I did not want it to infer or to any way uh, suggest that uh, A, he has not been doing a good job, or B, I want to take his position. I just would want to be there uh, beside him. And who makes up this group? General manager, general yeah. managers, senior staff, and three or four consultants. And how often do you meet? Once a month. And where do you meet? Lucadia. And the only question that I would have is, are, are there any other board members from any other agency at this meeting? No. Never has been? Never has. And does this group, the NSDWRC, keep records, uh, financial records of some type? No. So the monies that we've put into it, they don't show anyway? Well, it's a record that we contribute, like there's a, you may recall we held the workshop um, six months ago about contributing towards developing the standards for IPR. Yeah. So as a group, the group is going to commit $100,000 towards those contributions, so we'll put in about 8000 So I can tell you what we put in and where it went, but it's not like we're keeping books as an organization that we report or track the income. Okay. So this doesn't show up on a budget anywhere? No. But the $8,000 you'd be taking is out of that fund for the advancement of IPR. Yes. So that's the only way you'd have to really know what you're looking for. Yeah. Like I said, we're actually well ahead of the curve on money coming in versus what we've contributed. So if we put 25000 in, we're 400000 to the good. So you're a working, you're a working, we're just a working group. The future group. We're I mean, just a working no, group. There's no, there's no organization, there's no rules. There's probably minutes. Do we keep minutes? We don't keep minutes of what goes on in the meetings. It's 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 put it this way: if you put a bunch of it's like it's like a man meeting, lack of better terms. We have the man meeting at the Water Authority. You have the man meeting at Encina, and it's where the the managers can get together, and lack of better terms, cut through issues, okay. make a decision as a consensus, and move forward. And all we're spending is about eight thousand dollars a year. This year we might put eight to ten thousand. Okay. Yeah. But out of that, so far we've received the funds. Oh, we're to we're do our pump station number one. Oh yeah, we're three hundred fifty thousand dollars beyond what we put in, paid back. Do you see any reason to have a board member at this time, or when do you see a time when you think the board members would be invited by this group? It'd be time to put together a. a GPA I, I th well, I, I, don't, I think where the issue is going to come down is, eventually. Okay, uh, Director Hernandez is gone, and I think you'll be going this next time too, assuming the board says yes. I think our initial request was fifty million. You may recall yeah, that better. But right there, there's there's an expense that we're paying for. Mm -hmm. We're paying for Mr. Hernandez. Yes. We're paying for him to go back to the lobby on behalf of this group. Absolutely, if the board approves it. So there's an expense. Yeah, though, the, from that standpoint, if to going our ratepayers directly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the 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 money that is looking forward to coming, eventually, we're going to get to a point where it's going to be coming from the managers and the engineers coming back to all of our respective boards or city councils asking for advice and direction. We are not even close to that point yet. We're still in the planning stages. We don't even have an EIR completed. We don't even know what we're doing yet. But when we get to the point where we actually have governance issues, okay, we need to either form a JPA, we need to form a JPA that rotates between agencies, might be Velocitas is it one year the board plus me, or it could be two members on board, we don't know. We're, we're so far away from that, we're not even close. So we don't have governance issues right now. What we have is planning issues that we're working through. If when we get to a point that we do have, let's put it this way, if we're suddenly all, we do get $50 million in grants or, or word of funding or something like that, I can guarantee you none of the general managers are gonna sit in there and sign an agreement. That's gonna all come back to our respective governing bodies for direction and approval and tell us where. We're not even close to that point. So who, maybe I should ask you this, Jim, who 
who goes with you on these Washington D.C. trips? Uh, how, the, how many uh, people and from what agencies? Uh, the, the, in the past, we've had uh, Olivenhine, Oceanside, Lucadia. Mm, that's about right. Uh, I think uh, maybe one more. I can't recall. Yeah. And, uh, Rincon, Rincon, Rincon. That's Rincon. correct. Rincon. And on those uh, adventures, uh, we've had uh, at least one additional board member uh, from Oceanside, and I believe uh, there may have been another one on the first trip. But I can't. I was so fresh, I didn't quite know who everybody was even. So, so uh, yes. Uh, and I said, and I and I did, did hear that there is a board member going this year. If it goes the way it is right now, there'll be three elected officials and three um, three GMs. Okay. okay. From Very six good. different districts. Uh, now you're going to get Christy from Olivia Hand Kim, Jim from here, Greg, Carrie. Carrie, I think maybe one of her, not okay. council members, but commission members. Because uh, sure. they have a water commission. Yeah. Maybe Greg Quist, Dr. Quist from the Rincon board. But I think there's going to be three elected and three GM teams. Okay. And try, doing the same thing, just their, their own agencies are paying for their fare and their per diem expense to do this. Yes. It's not coming out of the general funds from it's the It's not group. coming out of our group. Okay. So it's above and beyond the 8,000, 8 to 10,000 that we're giving to the group? Yes. And I will have to tell you, it's like I said, it's money well spent, I believe, for Director Hernandez to go back if the board approves it. Um, the, the group is, like I said, it's, it's, it's basically of engineering. And even the engineering contracts that we've awarded right now have been predominantly funded through the grants that we've, we've won. And then we have to have a matching fee of 25%, which we've contributed over the years. So we're, but again, we're several hundred thousand dollars to the good in what we've made. The, the issue I have, to be perfectly honest, is it's a working group of managers. It's not a policy group. Well, my only question about the group is the transparency issue. Yeah. If a constituent should ask you about it, I might have to, you know, I don't know. Do we spend something on it, but I don't know what it it's is. It's no different than MAM with, um, and seeing <coughs> MAM at the Water Authority. Those are. Well, but MAM, isn't that you? Yeah. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when we're sending people back to Washington to lobby. And oh, that's perfectly have. transparent. That's good. That has to be approved by you guys. I know. Yeah. We have to approve it, but I'm just saying we do approve it. We do send it. But at some point in time, the bookkeeping, more than having a person on the board, is more important to me that we just, where the money comes back to you. You said you have some money that pumps. Well, who else got money from that? Where, I mean, all those kind of questions. All of us. That's all of record because right now the way, the way it works is Olivenhain is the lead agency for all of us. Okay. So when the grant application goes in, Olivia does it on our behalf, we all sign it. Uh, so okay. when the funds come back, it actually is issued through the Prop 84, is what we've already received money from. So we all have agreements that we've signed that say this is what it's for and this is what you can spend the money on. So from that standpoint, that's all completely accounted for. There's no... That, that was the part I was trying to get. I'm sorry. I thought you were just talking about the 8 to 10,000. No, yeah, but no, the whole the thing whole is thing. all fully tracked and where the money goes. Well, I, I, I'm kind of curious, where, where does the 8 to 10,000 dollars go? Uh, that was what we had initial put into it. Like right now, we're going to contribute. I know what we put into it. Where does it go? Oh, it went into our matching <laughs> share no, of the you funds. You have no treasurer. You have no minutes. It, 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 where's the money? Oh, Levenheim took it? Yeah, Levenheim took it. And yeah. they just took it? Yeah. Okay. It goes in. I mean, it's actually the payables go through the board. The board approves the payables. I can't. I just. Okay. But is it, so is there a written record somewhere, though, where, sure. where the group spends their money? Oh, yeah. We've got all that. Yeah. Yeah, th it's fully tracked, but it's not something that we have somebody tracking as an accountant that that's their job for the group but leaving hand does it as the person applying all of the funds they're the, the lead agency, they're the lead agency. but do yeah. we get it on our payouts that we pay them x amount of dollars yeah. i haven't noticed we haven't paid anything in probably a year okay to leave hand. yeah you've got the ten thousand that'll be coming this year and again that's going to be contributed towards the state developing the ipr rules so when that does come before us, would you or Tom make sure that we know it's on there to know to look for it and then sure. we can question it then and yeah. maybe get an accounting of it or word? Just, you bet. just you so bet. we know it. You bet. That's all. I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with what you're doing. It's a great thing. Yeah, yeah there's no mystery spending here. It's right. all accounted yeah. through a leaving hand. Excuse me, I wasn't understanding what you were asking there. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, Jim, you'd still like to have yourself be on this. Yes, I, I would. And it really, it primarily, to see the inner workings of what's going on 
uh, other than, and I've, I've heard since I've been on the board about the, the program PDIR, uh, and have done some individual uh, meetings with the Liebenhain and uh, through Dennis, uh, talked to the uh, USGA uh, groundwater guy who's doing a study, I've just been told it from Aquas, Thing, uh, uh, about the groundwater, because the groundwater is really what I'm interested in, trying to understand what aquifer we have and how big it really is. And <clears throat> the more exposure and the more information is going to better suit the board and myself and the board as to what the possibilities of, of doing something with that. And this was just another step in that educational process. Uh, I think they've been doing a fine job. Uh, I've been up with that same group up to uh, um, uh, eat, um, eat, uh, the Orange County facility uh, and uh, got some great information as to Irvine? how. Pardon? Irvine? Uh, no, I don't Orange know. County. Pardon? Orange County. Orange County. Orange County. Orange County. Orange County. Yeah, Orange County. I got some great information as to how this process should we get some money and should we uh, have projects how they should be uh, accomplished with regard to the Corps of Engineers. And, you know, we need to have projects ready, shovel ready. We should probably have some money spent on our own so that when the time comes for allocations with the, the Army Corps, that they see we've already done something. So those are some of the things I would like more information on what part of the process that may be moving to. And so, um, in, in my discussions uh, to try to be a visitor in these last years, uh, I thought this may be the best way to accomplish that. So uh, this is uh, just presenting presenting this for board discussion? There's and no approval, I would hope. Yeah, based upon what uh, uh, what's being said by the general manager and where we are in the progress, I, I don't think it's the appropriate time to slip in a political, if you will, uh, an elected official, because I think it, it'll change, it'll change a lot. I, I think it, it might uh, diminish uh, Dennis's uh, capacity, maybe authority within within that uh, association. Um, and uh, I don't think at this time, you know, there's any really policy decision to be made. So I would rather wait until we mature that group a little bit further on down the line to where we, uh, we think it needs to be um, uh, have a little bit more governance to it. That's just my opinion. Anyone else? Well, I'm going to piggyback on uh, Director Podal in the sense that I do understand the difference between a working group and um, a governing a governance issues, especially with what goes on at the Water Authority. So I feel it might be premature. Um, I also feel as a, as a regional that I know groundwater is very important to you and you've been leading the way in it, um, Director Hernandez. But if that's your real focus, I would like to see you pursue it on your own and go and meet with the people rather than, since that's not the main focus of this regional group, it's just part of it. But um, certainly if it becomes an issue where it is governance issues and policy making, then it would be time to Just to clarify, uh, would there be any fiscal impact by Director Hernandez going to these meetings? Is there, is there, a, there's not really, does it cost money to actually attend? Is there a lunch? Is there food involved? Or how's it all work? That, this is the first time I've heard of this group is when Jim brought this up, so. Is, what, is there any fiscal impact other than the travel of him going to D.C.? No. no. But again, it is, as Director Evans said, it's a working group of management. It's not a working group of policy issues. And then another question is, if we do a approve Director Hernandez attending these meetings, would it be subject to the $150 stipend? It is not an organization that is approved by the board. So there would be no reimbursement for per diems nor travel. And if, if, we, if we approve this, there, I can see the benefit of uh, Director Hernandez getting, you know, getting some insight on this, but I, I think to, I'd like to have it brought back to the board as far as a presentation, almost like we, we do when we, when we attend the, uh, 
the tours and, and the other the other events that we go to. I'd like to hear something either from the general manager or from or anybody who is part of our district who's attending this. I'd like to get some sort of report, even if it's just a, a verbal report of what's going on there. If that would be the board's pleasure, that would be no problem. And just actually, because James attends with me uh, when we go to it, that we can just provide it as a monthly update and a report to the board. Uh, I will tell you, from the standpoint of a bunch of young managers sitting there, this will have an impact upon the dynamics of the group. Right or wrong, uh, it's no different than any one of you walking through the district and meeting an employee. You're a board member. It doesn't matter. You're a board member. just going to chime in and I think when it comes to groundwater the, there's no doubt that uh, Jim wants to and has worked at being our guy for that so I think that's a, a great place for you to be Jim but from what staff is saying at this point I, I actually would see you going to those meetings as probably being counterproductive uh, being on both sides of this at one time when an outsider comes in uh, not only does it hurt the general manager's credibility uh, but uh, no one's going to say anything. <laughs> I would think the meetings would be kind of a waste of time uh, because you're not amongst your group anymore. You now have someone else staring in at you, and that's just the nature of human being. So I, I, I personally uh, don't see it at this time, but when that time comes, you're the guy to do it. Uh, but I, I, I will be questioning the group as we move along on <coughs> where we're spending the money and why we're sending Jim to Washington at our expense and yet we're not reporting, uh, you know, he tells us he went there, he, you know, I mean, what's really happening there? Why are we asking for, if the GMs want this group and they're asking for political cover now to try to get money, well, then we are kind of involved somehow. So just watching more closely, but I, I would agree that right now I, I don't see any benefit in having a board member there. Uh, I just see it as a detriment to our staff. But that's What I will do is I'll start uh, providing a monthly update when we do have the meeting, just uh, we can get it informally to the board so you know the status of what we're doing. I will say for Director Nance, when he comes back from Washington, he gives a pretty detailed report on all the people they met because they're not back to for funny games. They're, they're going 12 hours a day for the two days that they're yeah. there. Yeah, well, I understand that. No, I, I, don't, I don't think that at all. Just yeah. again, it's a transparency issue. Sure. We're spending money on something. We all need to know about it. Absolutely. So, thank you very much. So, uh, a note and file, or do you want to vote on it, Jim? Note and file. Note and file. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim, for all you do. Uh, reports. We're going to have a rather lengthy one, I want to think, from the general manager. Uh, okay, first and foremost, uh, one of the, the greatest things that happened to us during the fire, um, <coughs> you've all been to meetings, and the best way to get somebody to come to a meeting is? Food. Feed them. Thank you. Food. <laughs> That's unanimous. Uh, the very first night, uh, the logistics guys that were doing it, they said, what do you want to eat? And I said, well, we couldn't get anywhere the first night. You, the freeways, you weren't going anywhere. So they picked a local establishment, which was Sorrento's. I sent you all an email about that. Um, they went over there. They refused a payment, period. Uh, he, he did everything except get his piggy bank and leave it on the door. And it wasn't a little bit of food. It was a lot of food. Um, so. Uh, we did pass our thanks on. Uh, I would ask all the board members individually, and then one either next meeting, either bring, uh, if you want to go to the level of a resolution, thanking them, but I would at least like to draft a letter for the five of you to sign on behalf of the board thanking them. Absolutely. And if you get a chance to drop by individually, please do. It was exceptional then to do that for us. Just don't stop by on Monday. I tried that. The They're closed on Mondays. <laughs> and Tuesday's spaghetti day, I think. So it's tough to get a table. Years. I, know. <laughs> I forget they closed on Monday. It's like so is Carmelo's, but I forget yeah. that too. I have a question. When you talk about logistics group, how many people are you talking about? Uh, there's always, we have eight point. positions in the EOC, and so you have people rotating through the logistics. So they will have somebody there, but eight hours later will be a different person. Same as planning as a different person that rotates through. Is that here? Yes, it's all internal staff. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but again, uh, in this, it was, I don't want to say it was funny or a, what's the right word, irony. We sat at lunch on Thursday at Aqua, and I sat between Betty and Jim, and they'd just come from one of the sessions on emergency planning. Yeah, right. And so I, I talked to both directors, no, we do have an EOC, we have this in place, we have this in place, we have food and cots and toothbrush and mouthwash and all this stuff here. 
And so we answered all the questions, and, and they asked the question, well, where would you say we are on a scale of 1 to 10? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On preparedness. Yeah, I said, we're 9, 9 and a half. And I think your response was, that's pretty good, because nobody else in the room would say anything past 5. Um, and I think it did show that we are, in fact, thanks to, where do you go? Oh, <laughs> I'm building the guy up and he leaves. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, thanks to Jerome and his staff, safety and everything else, so it all did work. So it was just kind of ironic that we were talking about it literally, and I had a meeting with them that morning at 11 o'clock, mm -hmm. already scheduled yeah. to go over it to come do a presentation to the board. Well, our 11 o'clock meeting got canceled at 9, and mm -hmm. we went into the ELC. So probably the second meeting in June, maybe July, Jerome's gonna be coming in and doing a full presentation to the board on all of the things that we have. It's new. Some of you heard it when you first got on the board, but that was two years ago. You heard a lot, so I'm going to have them come back and do it. So, if but well, um, we're going to have to start. We're going to have to start putting another letter in front of EOC because there's a lot of EOCs. Out yes. There. So, uh, uh, the one that uh, that I attend is the city, you know, the, the EOC. So, how do you guys keep in touch with that? Do you do it by web? We do it by web. We, we are on the, what they call Web EOC, which is a countywide uh, EOC, Emergency Operations Center. Then they have, which just post general things, street closures, activation of another EOC, San Marcos asks for help, whatever the case may be. And then concurrently, there's one they call the Water Hub. So that's all the water agencies. So that's where we get our work back and forth between. Wow. And if they want it on both, they just click the box that say Water Hub in uh, the, the countywide. So that's our predominant. We have a separate radio system, which is part of the county's 900, 800, 700 thing, whatever it is, that's countywide. So we have two base radios for that that we bring in, one at Metal Arc. Metal Arc's our alternate EOC. If this place were to burn down, Metal Arc Treatment Plant is fully equipped to do the same thing. We would all just go to Metal Arc, assuming we can get there. Um, so we're part of that radio system as well. We're part of the MAX radio system, which is the system maintained and operated by the water authority so we have multiple ways to get in contact plus we then have direct phone lines to the county eoc uh, as well as a seat at the city right. we don't actually attend the seat at the city we just do it through the web eoc so we've got pretty good pretty good redundancy in all, all areas so that was a uh, just like i said sorrentos if you get if the board likes just a letter i'll get a letter drafted for all of you to comment on and then we'll send it on again yeah. a couple things on, and I I know I speak for everyone when I say that the staff was tremendous throughout the entire fire, so please pass on and share. As we've indicated in our emails, a big thanks. To that extent, you mentioned a resolution for Sorrentos. I like your idea for a letter of appreciation signed by us, but if it's appropriate, I'd like to actually have a resolution of appreciation for the entire Valacito staff that they could be presented here and then maybe put up if there's a... Let's, I don't know if there's a break room or something mm -hmm. like that. Let's common. just bring that back in the director's comments. Okay. Right now sure. under the general manager report. Okay. And then one, one, one last. Sure. And then can we can we kind of capture everything that was taking place in perhaps four or five slides, uh, PowerPoint slides? Because that, you know, when we were at the uh, the breakfast yesterday, it seems to be everybody wants to know what did we do? What, back up what to lessons, the back up to yeah, the back up. Exactly. Lessons learned. What yeah. lessons learned? You bet. We can, that might be a slide that we can kind of get out there that's appropriate for the public um, to kind of get out there and, and inform them all the things that, that took place, but also some of the things that we learned and, and you know, how we overcame that. Absolutely. So. We actually have already spoken to Jerome. We already had our um, stand down meeting the next day. On Monday, we, we all met and everybody that sat through the EOC all came together, we all put our points together and they're doing that. That's gonna be actually part of a presentation to the board that right. I'm gonna have Jerome do. So you know what we did, what we learned, and the lessons learned. Right. Um, the story out of the whole thing, as you have all heard, and I think I've hopefully kept you up to speed on that, is a gentleman's house did uh, burn down on Thursday. Uh, very unfortunate. Uh, he went um, the route of the press, channel eight, channel 10, I did get a call from, I forget her name already, um, Kristen, Kristen Severance, Channel 10. She's the troubleshooter for Channel 10. Uh, she contacted me Thursday morning, yeah, Thursday, 10 o'clock, uh, and just gave me the basics. And the story that was going to come out was that a gentleman's house burned down because a fire hydrant in front of his home did not work. Fire department put used some water out of a swimming pool, supposedly, drained it to fight a fire next door. They left, said they would be back. They never came back. 
So that's the story that was out there, and he was very, very emotional, and I can completely understand that. I, I feel very bad for the family. Uh, Kristen did contact me. I, I sent you an email on that first day. Uh, she asked uh, several questions. One, is it you? Two, is it true? Three, what do you can do about it? Four, call me. Okay. Uh, Ken was in the uh, EOC with me, so we, we already had people in the uh, GIS room, so we printed out maps. We did verify, in fact, that he was one of our customers. We did verify there's a fire hydrant in front of his home, not a traditional fire hydrant, keep that in mind. Um, I called her back and I said, yeah, he's one of our customers. Yes, it's in our district. I'm in the middle of an emergency right now. I will get back to you as soon as I can. She did not return my call. Um, so that was the story that ran that first night, um, just that they heard from the water district, but there was no facts, more to follow. Okay. From that story, as I wrote in an email to you, we got no no phone calls, no emails, no blogs, no nothing. I don't think that's proper English, but we didn't receive anything. Uh, Kristen, uh, Kristen contacted me on, and I did send a crew out. Excuse me, that was the other thing I did. We did get a crew out there Friday. They got permission to get through the fire lines. They did go out and verify it was ours. So we did put our eyes on it, and they sent me pictures. Uh, starting on Monday, we kept going through the records, trying to find what we have to discuss this issue. She did call, what is today, Wednesday? So she did call um, yesterday and asked that we, she spoke to Lisa, she asked that we provide maintenance records. She asked that we provide the protocol on exercising the valves, obviously when it was last exercised, and what are we going to do about it? Uh, so we did find and locate, we do have agreements with San Marcos Fire Protection District, City of Escondido, Vista Fire Protection District. And what those agreements, the one from San Marcos is actually dated from 1965. This is not something new. This has been around a long time. Um, and what the agreements with all three of those agencies say, which covers the bulk of our district, is that we maintain the part below ground, what's called the burial. The bolted part you see at the bottom fire hydrant, that's the burial starting there. We maintain from there the underground piping, including the valve and the connection to our main. That's our responsibility. The fire department is responsible for maintaining the fire hydrant head, whatever, whatever it may be, whatever type it is. And, and the rationale behind why these agreements all came into effect is that there was a trend where more and more fire hydrants were getting put in because it wasn't costing the fire department anything to maintain or take care of them or fix them. So all the water agencies said, no, you're not going to put that in. Fire, firefighting is not our responsibility. You can't keep building thousands of these things and expect us to take care of them. So as a compromise, you take care of the top, we'll take care of the bottom. That's the way it all came about. So we verified that we did have all these agreements. Um, we then um, looked at maintenance records uh, so that I could prove that to uh, the homeowner plus the reporter. The last time it was actually operated was January 14th of this year. So we did, in fact, exercise. The statement that was made by the individual was that it was put in by the water district. They let them down because we never took care of it. We've never maintained it in 25 years, yada, yada, yada. So it was actually last operated January 14th, 2014. The time before that was June 30th, 2010. The, the operation you say, <clears throat> was that our valve or the fire hydrant itself? Our valve. We did not our operate nor, nor <clears throat> test the, the fire hydrant itself. So we did, in fact, operate it the way we said we had. Uh, we provided, the, uh, provided her with those records, uh, provided her with a copy of our GIS information, the maps, everything associated with it. Uh, yesterday at about 1.30, I sent the crew out that's actually the valve turning crew, and I said, okay, go see if it works. And in other words, the valve that's on the fire hydrant. Now, in this case, it's not a fire hydrant. It's 330 plus PSI at this fire hydrant. That is a lot of pressure, considering you've got 50 to 60 coming in your house. So make that six times stronger. Uh, it's very powerful. Because of that, you cannot put a regular fire hydrant in. You cannot take that kind of pressure. So what it is, it's a fabricated special construction made out of steel. It has the same outlets that a fire hydrant has on it. But the valve that operates, it has to be a very high pressure valve too. It's called a plug valve. A plug valve goes from off to on fully in a quarter of a turn. So it's not like turning your faucet on your house where more, the more you turn it, the more water you get. You go from off to on and it's 100% flow. Because of that, it is harder to turn because it's also under 330 PSI. That's a lot of pressure. 
They did go out yesterday at 1.30. They put their wrench on it, which is a bigger wrench than the fireman probably had. They turned it and opened. They operated, they operated fine. They closed it. They took pictures. I sent the pictures to the reporter, um, sent her everything that we had. Uh, so she called me back again finally this morning. We've been playing phone tag, and I told her all the stuff we had, the maintenance records, the pictures, the fact that it did in fact work. Here's the last times we maintained it. Uh, she still wanted to go ahead and give us our chance to put that on the air because we were accused by a homeowner that it didn't work and it was our fault. Um, she met with me this morning at 11 o'clock with Lisa out in front. We had about a 45 minute interview, which means 20 seconds footage of pieces. Um, she was very, uh, very open and honest about what we told her and she said, thank you. Sounds like you guys did what you're supposed to do. Um, so what it's airing 20 minutes ago. Uh -huh. So I think somebody's recording it and we'll get it to the board as soon as we can uh, see what comes out of it. Uh, her only question was how did these fire hydrants in this area, were, were they not maintained above ground? Well, what we've got carved out in the very southeast corner is a little, fi little tiny um, fire, district. fire district, the Elfin Forest, uh, yada, 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 volunteer fire department number one. Uh, and it encompasses eight or ten, eight, I think, eight fire hydrants. We overlaid the maps. Ken had actually done the ISO study where they do annual insurance studies to determine fire insurance rates. So we knew where it at. We actually knew that was a little district down here. We don't have an agreement with them uh, for the maintenance of it. So we don't know if they do or do not maintain it. So that's really where the last of the conversation came when she goes, well, what's your next step? Apparently, you've got all the other agencies, you're good, everybody agrees, so well, I'm going to try to reach an agreement with them. If nothing else, we will let them know there's eight fire hydrants down here, your responsibility, not ours, we take care of this part. Uh, to be fair to all sides, she goes, I'm going to contact them. Well, good, let me know, because then you can give me the number. Um, <laughs> so I can contact them. She sent me an email um, about 3 o'clock, indicating she did speak to them. Their response was, yes, we know they're there. And they claim they told us that, yeah, they know they're there, but they can't use them anyway because they don't have the right equipment. They don't have a wrench. Yeah. Wow. So depending on how you want to take that response, obviously they knew they were there. They should have a PR person. And you would think, <laughs> and you would think they would buy the right equipment. But uh, there again, the whole goal is not to complain about any of the fire departments. They did a fantastic job. The issue, and I wrote her back, I said, that's great. Appreciate the input. I'll give them a call and work with them. But the story is about a homeowner who accused the district of not maintaining a fire hydrant, and because the fire hydrant wouldn't work, his house burned down. Well, the story is not true. But she said she's going to give them their fair due. Whether or not that gets into the story, I don't know. Uh, but she sent me the phone number and the contact. So the only follow-up we really have is to reach out to them, let them know that they have eight fire hydrants. It's their responsibility to maintain. If they don't have the staff because they're a volunteer fire department, and I'm assuming that means it goes to the county is my guess, then we can also probably enter into an agreement with them that if we maintain them, they just pay the cost of maintaining that above ground park. I don't know, but that's the last step. So uh, it actually, the interview I think went very well. Uh, she took, I gave her copies of all of the paperwork, our work orders, our, everything that we did, she has copies of it. So there's not a whole lot left to speculation as to why the fire hydrant did or did not work. I, uh, from a consumer's point of view, I can add something to that because I happen to see the, uh, reporting that this young lady did on Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. And on Tuesday, I was interested, I was watching television next to my computer, and uh, she was giving an interview with somebody out in Elfin Forest who I had never seen before, and he was a big guy, and he said, yeah, well, they told me I had to leave, and I told him I'm staying to protect my property and my equipment, and besides, my muffler bearings, they have burnt out. And I'm sitting there, I'm going, I hope she knows there's no such thing as muffler bearings. <laughs> But she went out with the report, and when she finished the report with this guy who was walking around his house, you know, with a, with a hose in his hand, and everybody has Tuesday, please look it up. And uh, at the end of it, she turns and goes, this is Sandra, whatever my name is, and Bob got stuck here because his muffler bearings went out, and he's protecting his home. Thank you. Channel 10, Eyewitness News. Over on Tuesday. Wednesday, I'm watching television, and there's Bronco Bob again. Only now there's no house behind him. He's burnt. <laughs> Same guy. Yeah, I'm pretty mad. I'm pretty upset. I felt that that fire department let me down. They were here the day before and they took water out of my pool because they couldn't get 
the fire hydrant open, and it was Spring Valley Fire Department. And uh, they brought that up, and, and uh, so his wife chimed in about, yeah, we pay for water, we pay, and we couldn't get any. And then she turned the mic and said something silly again. I'm sitting there looking at it going, really? As he points down to his five burnt out trucks, because he didn't move the day before and he had plenty of time to, and I'm going, there's an insurance scam coming up here pretty quick. <laughs> so uh, it was interesting to watch, and, and she was the same reporter both times. So if she doesn't know there's no such thing as muffler bearings, <laughs> it tells me, and that was on Channel 10. It's like, don't they have producers? that you know, should know this stuff before it goes on. But anyhow, as a, as a consumer, that's what I saw. So I saw that, didn't even think about talking to you about it, because I said, shit, you got better things to worry about. And it wasn't until you started sending me the emails that I started smiling, going, yeah, I saw that guy the day before, too. Yeah. So if anybody has Channel 10, it, people will get there. Look at the day before, and you'll see that same guy. OK, I'll go look for that. I didn't wow. know Spring Valley, though. That's good. I didn't know Spring Valley, yeah. OK. Spring Valley Fire Department. So it was, it was very interesting, so I don't know how the story is, but I'll give her credit. She was very fair about the question she asked us today um, and definitely wanted to do our side. So I'm going to assume it comes out in a very even, balanced story. Hopefully so. Hopefully. The only other thing I did send Just you. Just add on to that a little bit with, and to tell you about the reporting and what goes on, because uh, at the uh, EOC, you hear the conversations between uh, the firemen and the sheriffs, and it's all about knocking on doors and telling people to get out and how difficult it is for some people who refuse to get out and and the sheriff or the fire people rotate they they'll if somebody doesn't leave they'll tell they know who it is and they'll try to get back every half hour depending on what's going on the fire and get them out of there and uh, sometimes they can't get back because the fire is, is too dangerous yeah. And, and then on the other hand, you have the news, and all they're interviewing is people that have stayed with their homes. Right. And it, it's setting up disaster that isn't right. Because people are thinking, well, if, if I would have stayed, I could have saved my home, which is the farthest from the truth because they got a, they got a garden hose and, yeah. and, and it's been proven it evaporates you know, when, the, when the fire comes. Um, so anyway, it's just a point of it's it's a a point it's making, a point. making that. The, the, uh, the news agencies, in, in, a, in essence, uh, encouraging people to stay at their home next time, and the agencies are trying to get them out. Well, if you back up and just drive along 78 and look it up at the hill, it's black and then you see a house. It's yeah. black and you see a house. And then you see the stories as what, what didn't survive, and it's usually because of the defensible area or yes. they couldn't get back into it because the fire crossed the road and they just couldn't get there anymore. But and as you can see, the other thing I noticed the time we talked about that was that uh, the PIOs obviously don't know the reporters, and the reporters don't know the PIOs, because they have people calling and crying that they're interviewing on the phone. Well, where's the fire? Well, it looks like it's all around my house, and they're crying. It's like, well, get the f why are you talking on the phone? You know, it's like, really, and you're talking on the phone? I didn't say it. <laughs> I didn't say it. No, I, I understand. It's, but, it's I, but I mean, somehow, the, the, the people at the city or the county and the fire, they need to know who they need to call or who, or they need to be known to those people that are going to be the news reporters. Because reporters talk to anybody they can on the phone. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. they can't find anybody. They usually find people that aren't capable of explaining. Yeah. So then people get the wrong information. And we didn't receive through our EOC, through our IC, we, didn't, we received no comments from any fire yeah. or fire department saying it wouldn't work. We didn't get a call to say, hey, get out there. Not, not that I think we could have, right. but we yeah. didn't even receive a complaint that it didn't work. Okay. The other thing I did send out to you um, last week was the um, billing cycle policy we talked about. It was kind of three days. It could be five days if you had a weekend. Uh, top. So John, with his staff, went through, and it was a before and after in the column. I showed you what we did. So really what they did is they realigned the three days that we had sent billings out instead of four. And so what it is, it allowed that it would be a seven-day period instead of three that it worked out. So it worked out well, and I actually did get one other lady who wrote me an email that was similar to what you spoke about, Director Hernandez. It just happens to hit on this day, and she says, it doesn't work. Can we move the payment? Well, we can't move the payment, but just call. But we did change it, so it ends up being a seven-day period for everybody. Before it was a three for sure, but it could have been five. Yeah. Now it's just seven. Thank so you. it worked within the footprint of policy. So Perfect. that worked out well. Um, other than that, it's the Hernandez policy. The Hernandez policy. <laughs> it's the Hernandez codicil. 
My constituents will thank me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, oh, other than that, it's been an interesting watching. week. And that would be your with wife. respect to Director Sinella's uh, request for or, a, a resolution from the board, if you bring it back up, we are actually planning, Lisa's planning a luncheon for all the employees. So what we do is coordinate that maybe with the board coming and recognizing yeah, it. Perfect. I told her she can spend $125 to pay for lunch. Um, so we'll see what we get. <laughs> they might get us free for all 110 employees. You never know. <laughs> now that's all I have. But, but well, I, I need to tell you, I did see Mrs. Sorrento on Tuesday, and she said that nice young man Tom keeps coming in there for dinner every night with his fire hat on. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wouldn't doubt it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's all I have. Okay. District Legal Council. You know, I have an update here uh, based on Dennis's performance. Uh, it looks like Universal Studios is calling. <laughs> so. Jurassic Park 3? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, um, you know, talking about the public outreach and branding, branding sub subject, I don't know that <clears throat> if, uh, how many of you were uh, familiar with uh, uh, Bill Craven, but he was really, truly one of my favorite legislators. Just a, and he had this rattly voice from smoking, and he was, just a, he was a great guy. And, and I recall literally 25 years ago at a CSDA dinner, Bill Craven standing up there, you know, you guys, you got to tell them who you are, and they, they, they don't understand who you are out there. You got to get, you know, figure out some different ways to get your message out there. This is, this is the problem with your special districts, you know. And he was talking about basically the same thing You're you were talk, about. talking about literally over 25 years ago, in a different way, and, um, you know, truly a great, great guy. And the other thing is just, um, you can pat, take one, not, I know you're inundated by, you know, flyers and bills and everything like that, especially going to uh, Aqua and everything. So I'll just give you my two cents just real briefly. Uh, there's a couple of three bills here that uh, one is this AB 194, it's sort of a leftover from last year. And it expands the authorization of a district attorney or interested party to seek judicial determination that an action taken by a legislative body is null and void if the body uh, violated the requirement uh, that every agenda for a regular or special meeting is properly noticed. Mm -hmm. And this was the one where last year it started out where the chairman of the board could be uh, prosecuted criminally for not allowing somebody in the public to criticize the uh, legislative body or, or uh, the general manager or whomever. So this one's sort of morphed around. I, I don't think this is going to be going anywhere. Uh, the second one was a uh, Prop 218 just basically a small expansion of the definition of water to literally include everything. So it, it talks about uh, certain fees and charges uh, relating to water services, and that would also include uh, recycled water and reclaimed storm water and things like that. So that, that one seems to be uh, has some momentum and is going through uh, the uh, legislature. The other one is finally is just a CEQA bill, which was uh, uh, what I it's going to help avoid document dumping and sometimes what you get is we we have a project and we're we're doing our CEQA stuff and the EIR comes before the board and the board approves the EIR and there's there's been a process here where the public's had a right to comment on the EIR and then of course there's the public hearing where they can come and and provide a presentation uh, about their concerns with respect to the uh, environmental documentation and then we never really know, and sometimes what would happen is the plaintiffs, after the meeting, after the hearing, would literally come in and dump on you a bunch of documentation criticizing the EIR without having the staff or the board, frankly, having uh, understood what they were, their criticisms were. So this piece of legislation is to help avoid that situation where you sort of get uh, uh, ambushed at the end of the hearing process to require that unless there is, you know, very good, uh, you didn't know about uh, the, the grounds for non-compliance, or they uh, there they could not have been known with the exercise of reasonable diligence during the public comment period or the public hearing, that if you can't, you don't have standing, if you will, to bring a suit against the public agency if you don't bring it up. So it's really a notice and opportunity to be able to respond statute, which I think is helpful for the public agencies. Anyway, I thought I'd just bring those three to your attention. I kept it to one page, and um, that's all I have. Thank you. I have a question for you mm -hmm. that I'm going to ask uh, 
to under directed comments okay. running time limits for speakers. Okay. Please don't let me forget. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, San Diego County Water Authority, Director Evans. Well, tomorrow is our big meeting, and um, they're very excited right now. They seem to be on a positive roll on their um, responses to most of their litigation. They, um, doesn't mean they won't be appeals, but so far with the uh, Metropolitan Water District, it's been favorable. Um, we've been under litigation with the QSA having to do with the Colorado River, and that was uh, reaffirmed, and they're getting back most, I think, all of their fees totally, which was wonderful for the district. Um, we're debating a little bit on the rates tomorrow, but um, I don't think there's going to be a big change. And you, I may need you to help me because I've been reading so much of this, I'm a little confused. But tomorrow we're going to be deciding on if we're going to continue the ag rates, which are those with agriculture, their rate, they pay less, but then they are also the first ones to lose water in a drought. Um, the, that's been there for quite some time and it's coming to, uh, it, it's expiring and I think the Tennessee will be, will go ahead and go with it. There's no reason not to. Uh, that is still a big part of our economy. And anything else I'm missing, Dennis? Just the hearing on the rates and charges. Just that's it? Yeah, that's it. So it's, if you want to come and be in public hearing. Ooh, wow. <laughs> on rates and charges? Tomorrow? Oh. San Diego, all day. Sunday, right, Peter. Can I ask you a question about the rates? I just got our clips today from Diane, and it seems like the County Water Authority is telling everybody there's a three to four percent increase. There's the top first clip things in there. They're already talking about increasing. Uh, I guess that's my one question: is that a factor? Is that just smoke? I mean, there's going to be an increase. And then number two, after all the attorneys have done which will be 50 years from now, but as we win case after case, what does it really mean to the ratepayers? Nothing. No. I'll let Tom address the first one. Okay. Yes, that's true. The uh, increase, you know, there's a combination of what they get from uh, Metropolitan increases coming through, and then they call it the blended rate, and what they're, because uh, it's not only Metropolitan Water District, now they have the other sources of water too, so they have to calculate that, and so, yeah, it's, Right, but, but one of them was kind of interesting in that it showed that the uh, processed water was cheaper than the raw water, like half a cent, and I didn't understand. You mean the increase was less, probably? It, probably the, increase, have, have the difference in the increase. See, right? The yeah. increase may have been less for... Um, yeah. Oh. yeah. It wouldn't be the actual water cost, because okay. the treat is always more so expensive. So the city of County Water has already approved these? No. They will be having a public hearing tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, and then they will adopt it probably in July. But it's just a matter of function. And those rates are what we anticipated in our budget that we presented to you. Or, well, actually, so just to incorporate it. Your next budget will. Yeah. Will, 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 we already prepared for that. We're prepared for that, yes. Yeah. We're prepared for that to happen. So it's. You, you'll, you'll see reflected in the next draft budget. And, and I apologize on a meeting, a budget meeting on Monday, because I was asking a lot about the 218 process, because I thought that was coming up again. I didn't realize there was an every two year process. And Dennis set me straight the other morning yeah. at Cowan. And what That's we're going to do said. is actually give you a presentation at the next budget showing how that spreads out as well. But I apologize to Tom because he's the one I cut short and said, tell me the bottom line first. What I wanted to know is how much are you going to be asking for Raising increase? Rates. No rate. Which I'll ask next year. Yes. Before yes. you go through it, what I'll are you going to ask? I'll tell you before you ask. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> but, so I apologize. That was just, last year was my first 218 and I thought it was an every year event. Yeah. I didn't realize you and, we, and we're going to actually bring back for discussion more consideration on a multi-year beyond two years That's on really the 218 good. notice. A lot easier, a lot less work, and a lot easier to project our future. Well, I did notice it was done now that's a non-election year every two years when it comes back. I'm sure that it's just happened. Just a coincidence. Yeah. Coincidence. Yeah. Good planning. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and Cena Wastewater Authority Capital Improvements Committee. There was no meeting this month. Uh, I don't know that if it's going to be rescheduled, but... Uh, was canceled. Oh, okay. And then we'll move the Policy and Finance Committee. And El Presidente. Well, um, I don't know when the last time we talked about this, because uh, we have we only had one board meeting this, this month. This is the only one this month. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, at our last board meeting, which was April 23rd, did I talk about that? I did. He did the last meeting. Okay, cool. Well, we had no PFC meeting as well. Uh, this this month, so uh, we have a board meeting scheduled for next Wednesday the 28th. That's it. Uh, other business, uh, just to let you know, there is a WEF 
Bay Delta tour, June 18th through 20th. I was on it last year, along with Director <coughs> Evans, and uh, very interesting, very insightful. If you haven't been on it, and you can. It's probably the best of the tours. It's a great tour. Yeah. It's a great tour. A lot of information. Moving on. Director's comments. Uh, future agenda items. Uh, you know, I missed something. I'm sorry. On 3.5. Travel conference. Director's reports and travel conference seminars. Yeah, sorry about that. If we can go back to that. They used to do? Okay. Uh, 3.5, I have a few of them. Well, the last month, I have quite a few, so this is the only meeting we've had. Uh, on May the 3rd, we had our Water Academy tour. From here, it seems like forever ago, but it was just <laughs> a few weeks ago. Uh, and it was the first one on a Saturday. It was very, very well attended. Uh, your staff was awesome. Uh, they did a great job. Uh, I broke into one of the groups and just asked if, how many of them is this the second time on the tour? And none of them raised their hand, for which I was very happy. Uh, of course, no one except for Lisa probably knew why I was asking that question. There still were quite a few, I would say, people that were retired. Yes. Or, 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 and not that many active uh, um, community people out there. So I don't know if sadly is the answer or not, but you look well with those numbers. But I, I'm very impressed by our staff, very impressed by everything they did, very impressed uh, by the shirts that they wore that day. They have special shirts if they're on the Water Academy tour. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, very educational. And everybody on the tour uh, was really enjoying it. Uh, I didn't actually go out on the bus, so we did everything here. Uh, but uh, 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 very educational. Boy, I, I can't say how well I think it went, and the people that went there really enjoyed it. Good, thank you. Uh, on the uh, fourth, took off and went up to Aqua at Monterey, as long as other board members and staff as well. Uh, on the fifth was the JPIA meeting which was uh, my first one at going to the JPIA meeting, although I went last year, Betty was our person the day before us. Uh, yeah, uh, fascinating, very informative, got a lot of information, uh, great to hear. As much as we can do with the JPIA, JPIA the better off we are. Uh, but it's funny, I was on the, um, I'm now on the uh, membership committee for Aqua. And you know, the membership meeting was kind of funny. It's like, well, how do we go and get more members? I said, well, get more people to join the JPIA because then you have to be a member. Because other than that, it's very educational, awkward, but if it's a standalone, without the JPIA, I don't think it'd be in existence. Because people, to be on the JPIA, you have to belong. Be a member of Aqua. Yeah. So, and, and it makes sense because of the educational value, which just helps out the JPIA as well. So, uh, interesting. Um, uh, I, I was, uh, I'm on the membership committee and uh, the energy committee with uh, Paul, Gary. Paul, the GM's name? Gary. He's the chair. Uh, Gary Rand. Gary Rand. Yeah, Gary, Gary, Gary Rand. Yeah, Gary Rand. Gary Rand from Dallas. Uh, uh, that, that was uh, interesting. Uh, and then uh, one of the days out there I was appointed to the District 10. Uh, they actually had a big election, the mm -hmm. whole room. Region, and, and, Region and, 10. And I was, Region 10. I was unanimous. <laughs> of course, I was the only one. Exactly. That's the first time that I actually didn't, I ran out of post. <laughs> Did it come in second? So yeah, I was going to say, come in second, you're in a lot of trouble. That'll be next year. I'll come in second. I'll say, get them out of here. Uh, and that was a very interesting. I mean, the the education that that you get from Aqua, Casa, all, all these groups is just uh, so needed by the board to keep up, so we can keep up with some of the terminologies that staff, except Tom, uh, that we can understand. Tom's financial stuff is still a little out there. Um, Tom's then, uh, <laughs> pre-budget budget, Kawa. Went to the Kawa uh, meeting yesterday. Um, interesting, it was really on uh, outreach, uh, the name of the company. Someone else will tell me because everybody else was there. Southwest Strategies. Thank you. Southwest Strategies, you have a little, a little thing on Bob Newhart, Bob Newhart short, which was very good for anybody to see, especially if you're about to have an interview. It was funny, I actually listened to what he said and had my different talking points, and I structured it differently based on what he said yesterday. And the key point I never thought about is the press will not put dead air time on TV. So you're always in a hurry to respond. Yeah. And he said, don't do it. Stop, think, talk. He says, they're not going to put that pause in there. I never... I didn't think that. that, and that was the point that I thought about. Is doing, yeah, you always want to have that quick, and 
You don't have to because they're going to cut it down. They're going to cut it anyway. I never thought about yeah, that. So you have time. time to think yeah, about so that was a very good point. But uh, and that was very good. So with that, I'm done with my uh, 3.5 director reports, travel comment, conference or something. Anyone else? Um, I agree with you on the how great Aqua is, but I did want to make a point. We, we did ask, uh, Jim and I actually asked <laughs> Dennis about the emergency and the EOC, and the interesting was we had gone to, and it was about earthquakes. Yeah. <laughs> and it was very informative in that the person who got up, and I'm going to forget the district she represents, but it's somewhere up in the Delta area, and mm -hmm. she ranked herself as a point at, at eight, but she was giving this long list, and they were saying, that you don't want three days supply, you need 10 oh, days yeah. of supply. This is, you know, and we're pushing for five because the public doesn't want to hear this, but the water's not going to be there and this isn't going to happen. You're going to be in trouble and make sure your employees, it's not just your employees want to do, but make sure the employees have taken care of their families and everybody's got, so I kind of came out and was like, okay, I'm in real trouble. I, I thought my three days was good. <laughs> and um, talked to Dennis, and Dennis said we were at a nine, and it was like, oh my gosh, that's even, we should have been presenting. <laughs> it, you know. And then when the fire came, and like some of you saw my email, I was really blown away with the updates. Um, how amazing, everybody worked in all of it, the entire emergency, but with our district and what they did. And what had occurred to me, and I mentioned this to Dennis yesterday, I think it was at the meeting that there was a time when it was not on SCADA and these guys were running through the flames doing all that stuff one on one. Yeah, 97 so they were I out there. I just can't tell you how much every drop of water, it's like having water torture at home because <laughs> I'm very much aware of how important it is. Also on Kawa, I thought that was a good point, Dennis. I thought the pausing was very interesting, a very good point. And um, had never ever thought of that. I hadn't either. That was a very good point. Yeah. Very good. Mr. Hernandez. Uh, yeah, it was interesting that, that attending that same uh, conference session uh, that they were talking about quakes. It, it didn't say anything about fire. And I know it was about surviving the shakes, mm -hmm. but it, it, particularly in our area, you know, we're more inclined to see major fires and, than uh, earthquakes. And, uh, I, but I too came away with. And I'm so underprepared, I can't believe it. <laughs> and when I asked a number of folks that I generally speak to, I, I, first I asked them, are you ready for three? No. I, well, then you're certainly not ready for 10. 10? How much time do you need? I said, well, you're going to need more time than you think. So uh, getting that out there as well. Um, the other thing that, uh, of course, uh, Groundwater, I attended that, uh, that meeting. Uh, they're, they're working on a statewide statement on groundwater as to how to uh, preserve it, how to regulate it, uh, how to monitor it. Uh, it was, again, the, the, the broad spectrum of groundwater. It is essential. It's uh, all important. It's being overutilized almost everywhere. Uh, how to replenish it. So, uh, and, and I'm hopeful that we're going to be ahead of the curve in our area once we know where our area is. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, the last, uh, the storage, 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 storage. It was interesting uh, in the presentation that I gave yesterday, one of the slides that I have is what we've been doing that others in the state have not. And we have been building storage and doing uh, the, the QSA and the, the agreement with Olive and I. Uh, we've been doing things. The people up north, God help them. Uh, they are suffering because of their own lack of wanting to do the storage that is necessary. And I didn't realize, because I did the Northern Tour last year, and they did show us the Sites Reservoir, which is a massive area, but it sounded like to me, oh, well, you know, this is something that's just come up, and, and uh, no wonder they're still arguing about it. Then we went to this. They've been talking about that thing for 15 years. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> how many times does the drought need to knock on your door before you go, you know, I think we better let this one in. Nope, they're still again it, yep. they're still again it, and um, so uh, they're living in their own stew. Um, as with if regard- I can, If I can add one thing yeah. that, that, that I think is the bottom line to it, I think the farmers know they need it, and they want it, but they want someone else to pay for it. 
They don't want to see it in their water rates. I mean, that seems to be the problem. That's why they keep taking groundwater. It's free. Well, uh, they don't want to have to pay for jack. Yeah, that's that's partially true for the for the Central Valley. The Northern folks, um, again, and I've said this before, their priorities are fish, farmers, the people up north, and the, then the ocean. And if the ocean won't take it, they'll send it to us. So uh, they are just fixated on. They believe that that they had these years of, of plenty because of the northern uh, climate and all that. That they don't need this storage. Well, now this shoe is on the other foot, and they're in trouble. Um, <clears throat> my um, uh, my presentation yesterday. Uh, I'm going to preview that preview that with the staff, and if appropriate. I'll bring it before the board for your review and, and see. Uh, Can we give you the ten or fifteen thousand dollars? No, I'm going to just ask for reimbursement for two hundred. And if you I think kidding, it's worthy, I was kidding. I was kidding. Oh no, well, I'm not. So Knock we'll see. Out, see what happens. Quit throwing ideas out yeah, there. Sorry. Yeah. sorry, guys. Okay, is all the committee uh, conference seminars okay? And uh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, still people. To the left. To the left. Okay. Ms. Portal. Uh -huh. Um. So I was also a part of the uh, of the fire and the emergency response and all that good stuff. But I want I, I told you today, Dennis, that uh, the city is planning a uh, responder. I don't know what would you call it? I guess responder appreciation day. Um, and uh, so I've been working with the city uh, only because we have facilities, as the school district has facilities. So they're trying to figure out a place that's large enough to to. Uh, to contain all the different agencies that they want to show appreciation to. So right now, uh, they're planning uh, uh, the Saturday at the end of the month. Is that the 30th or 31st or something like that? 31st, 31st. I believe. And I don't know the time yet, but it'll probably be midday. So I'm walking the site tomorrow with uh, the city uh, to uh, kind of get their idea. It, it's being put on by the city to try to uh, get an idea of what, what they're trying to do. Uh, and then I'll get back to you. Okay. Certainly, Val Cetus would be a part of that, and uh, it's just about the uh, city of San Marcos uh, saying thank you to all the responders and that's okay. all the agencies. I'm sure Jack will talk about that. Right, right. And so... Um, it, it sounds like that's the political response to it. Sure, and it'll probably be city council people up there, you know. By the way, the, and did you hear a lot of those uh, during the fire when, when they had uh, Cal Fire or something up there? Yeah. You're, you're, looking, you're, you're watching it to hear something about the fire, and, and they're all introducing the politicos. And uh, anyway, he didn't get it's much amazing. about the fire. How so, with you on that? Anyway, really? um, I also went to the um, uh, California Water Utilities, and uh, you know what I thought was uh, one of the things he said also was uh, to 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 limit the amount of people that talks to the public. And, you know, have have a have a person that yes. represents uh, the district so that you can you can make sure you know what you're saying. It's a kind of a unified approach. Yeah, very controlled. That's all I got. Okay. I know, yep. Mike, but I wonder, did I tell you about I did the Hoover Dam tour? I, don't know. I was wondering the same thing. I can't, I can't I remember. Can't it's remember. been so long. No. I can't remember. When was the tour? Mike and together and, it, and he's going no, to tell didn't. you about it now because it's yeah, his turn and I'll, I'll <laughs> step on it. And, but yes, we did it in um, April. I think it was April 28th. Yeah, 28th, you know. 26th, 27th, 28th. And we haven't had a meeting This month has yeah. been so long and so short. So you go for it and I'll just, I had one little yeah, thing to say. I may have a little bit different perspective than uh, Director Evans because she's been on the board longer than I have. For me, it was uh, it was not only informative just to learn about the process that the water goes through from the Hoover Dam down to Lake Havasu up to uh, Copper Basin and then into the aqueduct and then eventually here. But for a new board member, it was just really enlightening to kind of learn the uh, how it all works with MWD and, and the San Diego County Water Authority and how it's all stored down there in uh, uh, San Vicente, I believe mm -hmm. it is. We went, we had a chance to go down there. That was the end of the tour. We yep. got a chance to see that dam, which was a little bit smaller than Hoover, but quite impressive still. Mm -hmm. um, so I learned a lot. Took away quite a bit. One one little piece that came up that was kind of a interesting uh, tidbit was that I guess nine ten years ago they lined the aqueduct for the first time. My timing right there. Yeah. Good job. And and their, their, their claim to fame was for doing that was that they were going to save 80,000 acre feet per year uh, water, which is great. 
on the surface, right? But what we, what we learned was that that took away from the groundwater that was <laughs> steeping into Mexico, northern Mexico, and those farmers yep. now are, are, are suffering. Now so, they're screaming. That's and, right. and, and that water had been there, that groundwater had been there for them for 40, 50, whatever years. And uh, they you know, they built their livelihoods on, on that, having that groundwater there. So it, it, what, it, what it sent in my mind was that although you might have positive intentions when you're doing something, you always got to look at it you know, from every angle and, and really look downstream, literally, of how this might affect uh, some other folks as well. In addition, I was at the Cala event. I think we talked about that with public relations. It was just a, a good overall refresher um, for me to, to hear that presentation again. And then I just, I just a quick clarification, Diane, if you can double check for us. I know a lot of us are going to the CSDA um, dinner next week, but all the paperwork, even including theirs, it says it says Thursday, May 27th, but May 27th is a Tuesday. So I'm not sure, is it Thursday or is it Tuesday? Uh, it's tomorrow night. I think the date is the 27th, so I will. We'll need to verify okay. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday? Okay. It's Tuesday, the 27th. Okay. They did have it for the Thursday, the 22nd. And they just changed it again to the 27th <laughs> after they had sent out their thing. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, you didn't have I it? didn't even read it. I went, yeah, it's yeah. tomorrow. Right? Okay. Tuesday the 27th. Okay. You would have ordered a steak dinner and had yeah. to <laughs> and pay for it yourself. I paid myself. It's <laughs> already cost me a bunch of money. Yeah. And that's all I had for trips. Just wear a fire hat. Yeah. I just wanted to add on the, on the, the dam. I think I saw it with as wide open eyes as you did. Director Sinella, and not only your comment is very, very appropriate that when you watch this, you realize how many things in our water system would really not fly in today's world with all the knowledge we have environmentally and, and, and just archaeologically and just businesses themselves. So it's really a miracle when you see what we did in the middle of nowhere that it's still working but you also realize sort of no matter what else we do, it will have reper repercussions down the road that we're not going to know. And it's very hard to make the decision. And then when we were at the pump station at um, Jean. Jean. Copper Jean. Basin, mm -hmm. the Palmer, Palmer something pump station. Winset or Jean? Huh? Winset? The one that's on the Lake Hatland Lake Havasu? The Havasen? one where we, that, it's in the beautiful building. It was built during the yeah, Winset, Depression, right? so it's absolutely it's beautiful. Like, yeah. What was amazing, they have these big that's turbines, the first, first the, and they're the same equipment. Almost 98% of it is running on the same equipment that it was built with in the 1940s. Yeah. I'm thinking, we don't make anything like that in today's world. They won't replace the motors. It, and that's what he said. And it was, we were in the control room, and he's saying even these not we, the knobs are nothing. And it was spot, it's, it's, it was spotless. Right. It was spotless you could have eaten as it. all right. places are. Right. But um, great job with that. that just blew me away. Yeah, but they, they, they those, really, those motors are so efficient. They've been offered. G, I think it's GE offered to buy them, so that they could put them in a museum, literally, and they refused. And no, they, he said they have. They, they know have, they can't get a motor that good. No, they're amazing. Just amazing. The whole system is amazing. I used to drive that route, and I never really thought about where the water, that it was actually dug under the hills. For some reason, I assume when you couldn't see it, it got around and out. <laughs> Mountains, that was amazing, and that was that it's all gravity flow. You know, so much of it is gravity flow. It's just amazing. Pretty it's impressive. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Very appreciative of it. And I have any, a little any other conferences, uh, seminars, travel? No? Then moving on. Uh, director's comments, and I'm going to start those out tonight because I already asked uh, a, a question. I, I'd like to see brought forward to us. Uh, the time to put something in effect is when you don't have a problem with it, mm -hmm. and we don't have a problem with speakers right now. Uh, but I'd like to see us put a three-minute, which is something you've never had, I understand, a three-minute time limit on the speakers, as every other organization I belong to, or have belonged to in the past, has. Um, just for those times when future boards 10 years from now might have a thousand people when they start talking about direct potable uh, at, at their front doors. So I just a thought, how do I go about doing that? I don't yeah, know. I mean, in the, uh, the Brown Act, um, you know, does allow the board to um, adopt, you know, reasonable regulations, uh, including time limits on public speakers. Okay, so that's, that's in the code. So it's been, I think, our experience that this is kind of a um, presidential prerogative. 
that the president basically, you know, it hasn't been a problem, but if it looked like it was a problem, you could you have the discretion to say, okay, we then we're going to cut you off, you know, because what happens sometimes is you have a three minute um, time limit, and then you get that meeting where there's a bunch of people that are they want to come and talk. So what you end up doing as a practical matter is you kind of let that you know expand a little bit and and let them go a little bit because you know you don't want to be impolite. And it, but that's a, again it's kind of a common sense thing. It's your prerogative. But it's it's you know very easy. I mean we can, yeah, we can you know, if it's something that you want to. Uh, well, bring it for for policy review because then it gets printed on uh, from the other groups that I mm -hmm. belong to. And yeah, five that have it. Um, it's printed on the actual speakers form so people understand. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, it's five minutes. minutes, but you know three minutes is the most common. Okay, we'll bring a we'll bring a draft policy back. And in the future, you may you sure. may need this. So let's just bring one of those forward. It, could. The advantage it gives you is you can you know if you. If you want to move it along, you feel like you're, you know, we've heard it and heard it and heard it, so you, you can cut them off, you know. But it is, it's really hard because you get in and you get an angry group in here, so to speak, and you got to be polite, and right. it's not, it's managing the. We'll bring, if you, we'll but bring if you have it, if you have it as a policy, people understand that. Yeah, we'll bring if it you forward. try to make a policy, oh yeah, no, you're right. Here, no, it's, you're dead yeah, in the water. Yeah, you're gonna get. And, okay. and the last thing I know, the entire board knows this, but just to explain, those three minutes, that person can say anything they want to say. They don't have to give their name. They don't have to give their address. They can curse. They can do anything within civility, and you just have to sit here and take it. Yep. And say thank you very much, and move the next one. Yeah. And I bring that up just because I know I've seen a couple of cases of people try to stop them, and that's ah, a big mistake. Yeah. yeah well, I used to have them, they when they're the you know with a lady that used to come in and you know, the Burger King commercial where's the where's the beef where's the beef yeah we used to have when I was at at Ramoni years ago we used to have this lady come in every time and she would come into the general manager and she'd ask the general manager to stand up and she reminded us very much like the lady on the commercial where did you take where's the money Mr. Hurtado where's the money and she was accusing him every meeting of stealing money at the uh, uh, you know taking the money from the people so anyway. Okay, we'll bring one forward. Okay, that one, and then I just have one other comment, and that's a comment on the fires, two comments on it. First one is I really want to thank this board. Uh, I've been other places other times where they haven't been as controlled. Thank this board for doing such a good job, letting staff do their job, and not bugging them, not calling them, not, and, and I want to thank staff for keeping us surprised of what was going on, which I've always seen, but I've also seen uh, board members and, and, and overstep their bounds and get involved in things. And this board, I asked uh, uh, Dennis about it on Monday when we met. I said, did you get it? He goes, no. I went, that's awesome. So I'm very proud of this board for not doing that. Um, and the last thing is, I do think we need to send out a letter as a joint board. I know that Dennis, you sent one out to staff, and I know that other people have sent them out. Um, but I think when we do something like that, we should do it as a board. Oh, absolutely. And, and it makes one in my opinion, had you added our name to yours, it's already done. It's finished. But now we need to send another one out. And it's like, really? Yeah, okay. You know, saying mostly the same things, but you got to change it up to make it look a little different. You know, but, uh, but you know, our gratitude for sure. how well our employees did. Absolutely. And then send one out to every other agency on how well they did. Right. Because all the agencies work together very well. Yeah. I'd, like to, I'd like to ask for consideration that we do a formal resolution and we present it to them and then they can hang it on some common area within the district, uh, actual, you know, resolution, picture framed, black, whatever, however, however we end up doing it. But this was quite a significant event, and I really think that the, the all the employees within the district did a, did a tremendous job and did deserve just as much credit as the firefighters and all the other agencies are getting uh, publicly. It's the least we can do as a board to recognize them in a formal manner. Would be my opinion. I would concur. And we give that to at the employees appreciation lunch. Yeah, I so say we're going to do, we have the regular employees appreciation lunch, but we're doing a special one just for the fire, so maybe we'll roll this into that. So I'll bring, I'll bring that forward. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Can we have to sign something? Yeah, I, I think that's the last item on the agenda. No other directors' comments, then uh, let's be adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.